You're looking at a live shot of downtown Dallas, Texas on a beautiful night for football. And as we pan west some eight miles, we find Texas Stadium, where tonight Texas Stadium will host an NFC Eastern Divisional matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the defending Super Bowl champion New York Giants. This ABC Sun, I'm Frank Gifford, and welcome to Texas Stadium, where tonight two longtime rivals will meet the Cowboys and the Giants. The Giants, of course, off to a dismal start here in 1986. They are 1-5. in five. They won their first game last week over St. Louis. Many people are saying, can they do it? Can they possibly get it together, put a playoff team together, and even perhaps defend their Super Bowl title? Well, it's a long shot with the players. Many of them feel they can do it, as does their head coach, Bill Parcells, and we'll hear from them at halftime. Meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys are 3-3. Three and three. They trail the Washington Redskins, who are 6-1 and one in the NFC East. And for the Dallas Cowboys, they have another problem. They have an identity crisis. When they went out on strike, their Cowboy fans all of a sudden developed a love affair with their replacement players. And the Cowboy fans are tough. The players have heard the boos. They've heard the jeers. And while the players are back, the Cowboy fans are not. The Cowboys, of course, can change all that by winning. The regulars have only won one game this season. The regulars lost seven of the last eight that was played a year ago. And they have not won in Texas Stadium in over a year. And as far as the fans are concerned, well, the replacement players could have done just as well. In any event, it's a Giants and Cowboys game, and we are looking for some fireworks tonight. And Al, how about a little bit on the Giants? Well, Frank, so many people have been talking about the Giants and the Giants having to win every game. If the Giants win all of their games the rest of the way, they're almost guaranteed a wild card spot. They'd wind up 10-5. and five. They can really afford a loss and probably still get into the playoffs at 9-6. and six. I think the most interesting thing with the New York Giants right now is Bill Parcells. Last year, smiling, players, buddy, sure, go dump Gatorade on my head, Bill Parcells. This year, after that 0-2 start and the three losses during the replacement schedule, he has become an ornery, distant Bill Parcells. But there's a method to his madness. He wants no more distractions, and there he is. It worked last week as they beat an inferior St. Louis team 30-7. to He wants them concentrating on the balance of the season. So Parcells and the Giants, and I think these are two critical weeks for the Giants. If they can beat Dallas tonight and New England next week, the rest of the schedule is not that difficult. They are 1-5. Dallas is 3-3, three and three, but as far as the fans are concerned, and Frank touched on it, What's happening to the fan base of the Dallas Cowboys, then? It's really something, Al, because, you know, America's team now isn't even Dallas's team. It's remarkable what's happened to the Cowboys here in Dallas. Their fans have clearly turned against them. And, of course, there is one way to remedy that. That's by beating the Giants. Really, what's going to be interesting tonight, how will the Cowboy ballplayers respond to last week? Buddy Ryan and the Eagles up 30-20, to 20, stuck it in their ear. 37-20 as they scored a touchdown in the final 10 seconds of the ball game. How are the Cowboy ballplayers are going to respond tonight? Hey, with names like Two Tall Jones, Randy White, Danny White, Tony Dorsett, Herschel Walker. This is a team that's capable of getting to the playoffs. Granted, they've been erratic. Two big things they can accomplish tonight. They can gain the respect of their fans with a victory, and with that same victory, they'll really deal a death blow to the New York Giants. And in their quest for that victory, they have won the toss, and they will receive the Cowboys receiving it back deep. Darryl Clack, 82, and Kelvin Edwards, one of the replacement players who has stuck in wide receiver. Raul Allegra to kick off for the Giants. And at the nine-yard line is Kelvin Edwards, who comes out past the 20 and is taken down at the 24. And 35-year-old Danny White goes to the helm for the Dallas Cowboys. White, who is backed up by Steve Pallour, and Danny for the season, throwing for 1,110 yards, and the backs with him, Dorsett and Walker to start. Renfro and Banks are the wide receivers with Cosby the tight end. And the revamped men up front, including one rookie on the right side, Kevin Gogan. For the moment, they go with Thornton Chandler, starting now at tight end. He is number 89. And they go with a double tight end set with Cosby on the other side. So two tight ends on the first play for Dallas. With Walker going in motion. The fake and White on a roll. And Danny looking downfield and going deep and complete to the 43 to Doug Cosby. So they come out of a double tight end set. Lawrence Taylor chasing Danny White. Hitting him as he threw. But White completing the pass for a first down out at the 43-yard line. Now defensively for the Giants... The defense that spurred them to their Super Bowl win last year, the three up front. And we will see a lot of Dorsey as well. 
The great linebackers, of course, Perry Williams, who was hurt early in the season, is now back after a neck injury at one corner spot. Timmy Newsom is in the game at fullback for Dallas from the 42-yard line. And Tony Dorsett gets a block from Newsom, and Dorsett springs to the outside, and there's a penalty marker down back at the New York 44-yard line. Kenny Hill in on the tackle. And an altercation on the far side to get things underway as well. I guess there's an altercation. Half the Giants team that is out on the field. Only three fellas stayed out on the field. We've got eight guys over in the middle of the Cowboy bench. Quite a contingent. Interesting how the Cowboys did open up with the two tight ends. As Al mentioned, Thornton Chandler and Doug Cosby. Cosby splitting out as a wide receiver. As big as he is, he is a very apt, very quick man, and you have to treat him much like a wide receiver. We have a personal foul. Illegal crack back, number 84. That is Doug Cosby, and that will move the ball all the way back inside the 30-yard line, and they'll put it down at the 28-yard line. Giants have really handled Crosby over the past five games they played. They've held him to without a touchdown, but in previous games, in the previous five games, he had five touchdowns against them. Cosby had six catches in their game last week against Philadelphia, so Doug is, uh, he's the player rep, and it's important for him to perform well after the strike. First and 25, screen to Dorsett. Neat little move, but a minimal gain out to the 30-yard line. Stopped by George Martin, number 75. So Tony picks up about three, and it will be second down and 23. Gentlemen, do you get the impression in watching the New York Giants swarm to the football and put the hit on the ball carrier and the receivers that they're a team that's playing like they're a little desperate, which they should be. Boy, are they hitting. It is a desperate situation. We're going to be talking about it throughout the night. And even if they win, it's going to continue to remain desperate. But you get the feel from all of them that they feel they can do this. It's more of a challenge than it is a desperate situation. Second down and 23. Taylor is at the top of the screen. Dorsett and the play is broken up by Banks and Marshall. Leonard Marshall, number 70, along with Banks, and third and long now for Dallas from their own 27-yard line. Carl Banks might as well have sent a message. Here I come. Look at him right there on the line of scrimmage. Gets inside Crawford Kerr, the right guard, and right into the path of Tony Dorsett, who had absolutely no chance on the play, but that certainly shouldn't have surprised Kerr in the Cowboy offensive line. Carl right on the line of scrimmage. Two or three seconds before the snap. He is a tremendous football player. Carl Banks. Danny White now comes up in the shotgun on third down and 25. And he took a look at the New York defensive alignment. And we have an official's time here for the moment. Well, in the 30-second clock, is down to zero. Offense, third down. And that'll cost them another five. Hey. Took a long time getting the playoff, and when Danny White walked up, he to look at the 30-second clock, it had already ticked off. That cost him five. And what Tom Landry, I know, does not want to do is get himself in deep trouble down here. You could say something very simple, like a draw play. You could see a screen play. He's going to be very careful when he takes it up on top. The Giants in a prevent defense. They have five of the defensive backs in the backfield at the moment. Third down, 30, with Walker in motion from the 23-yard line. White has to step up, pressured. And down he goes, back at the 19. Eric Howard gets the sack. Andy Hedden put the pressure on, number 54, with a sack going to Howard, number 74. He had two last week in the Cardinal game. He sacked Lomax a pair of times. Still in all, Danny White doing the right thing, not throwing that ball upfield where it could have been picked off, but the one big play to Cosby, and then it's been nothing but problems here with the first offensive move in the part of the Cowboys. McConkie to receive the punt. Mike Saxon, who leads the league in net punting average, gets off a good one. And McConkie fields at his own 35-yard line and brings it back seven yards out to the 42. So from there, near midfield, will the Giants take possession for the first time after a 47-yard kick and a seven-yard run back. Phil Sims to guide the Giants. Now, Joe Morris had his practice time limited, and there are Sims's numbers thus far in the three games in which he has played. 
the back, Lee Roussan will start, but Morris is okay. He's going to be in very early. Adams is the new starting fullback, and there is the revamped offensive line, and they begin as the Cowboys did with a double tight end setup. Moat and Bavaro from the 43-yard line. Straight ahead goes George Adams for a gain of about two, and Randy White, number 54, in his 13th season, is in on the stop, and there is the somewhat long-in-the-tooth Cowboy offensive line. Jones, the youngster, Brooks, and then White and Jeffcoat. The three linebackers with Lockhart in the middle, and the secondary featuring at one corner on the right side, Ron Francis, the rookie out of Baylor. Second down, eight. Giants from the 45. No score. Early first quarter. Adams takes it out to the 49-yard line, and the flag goes down. Lockhart in on the tackle. Referee tonight is Fred Wyant. Holding number 68, second down. Damian Johnson. That's over on that right side, Dan, where the Giants have been troubled. They, of course, lost Carl Nelson over the right side. He's undergoing treatment for Hodgkin's disease, and Damian Johnson is filling in for Chris Godfrey, and this was Johnson. That's Damian Johnson. Let's watch him on his block, see if we can detect the hold as we look at it from behind. Working to the inside against Kevin Brooks. I, I couldn't see it from there. That looked, it looked like a pretty good block from behind, but you can't see the hands, obviously. Second and 18, Sims protected well, has it deflected, incomplete, off the hand of Eugene Lockhart. He got in front of Bavaro to break the play up, but it'll be third and 18. And what a crucial series for the Cowboys and their defensive unit as we watch Eugene Lockhart go off the field. He doesn't play in their nickel package, which the Cowboys call their 4-0 defense. And so... The Cowboys, who did nothing offensively, now have backed the Giants into a third and long when they had field position close to midfield. So let's see if the Cowboys defensively come up with a big play. As the Giants normally do, third and long, Galbraith is in the game, number 30, alongside Sims, and Tony goes out into the pattern. On third and 18, Galbraith is open, makes the catch at the 41, and is taken down at the 43-yard line, well shy of the first down. Vince Albright makes the tackle. So they gave room underneath, and they could afford to on third and 18. Again, Phil Sims, like Danny White a few moments ago, being very careful on that third and extremely long yards. He had a shot at McConkey deep. Sims didn't want to take it, dumped it off, and has to settle for the fourth down and the punt. Sean Landetta to kick. This is Kelvin Edwards fielding at the 14-yard line and out of bounds at the 27-yard line. And the Cowboys begin their next drive from there. We have 9.32 remaining in a scoreless first quarter in Irving, Texas. Dallas Cowboys with a mark of 3-3 three and three, and the New York Giants with a record of 1-5. and five. Each team has had the ball once, and the Cowboys begin now at their own 28-yard line. Their second possession with Newsom in the game. And Walker as a receiver to the right, and it's Newsom who jumped, and Dorsett carries out to the 28-yard line. Newsom got set again, so we do not see a flag. Smart play by Timmy Newsom. Went in motion and then just went down on all fours and came to a, snap, a stop before the snap of the football. A very alert play. His other alternative would have been to keep going in motion, get parallel to the line of scrimmage by the snap of the ball, but veteran play. Does, however, make it a little more difficult to block for your set. <laughs> so it's second down and nine from the 29-yard line. A little swing and Dorsett drops the ball. Thinking about moving upfield, and it was Perry Williams who was one-on-one -on -one with him. A good look here at the Cowboys and their revamped offensive line. The Dallas Cowboys never even used to have players that weighed over 270. Check out the weights on some of these guys. Newton at over 300, Gogan at 316, and keep in mind they have a rookie that started for them, Jeff Zimmerman, their third-round draft choice, who is 320-plus. A big change in Big D as far as big guys are concerned. Not an offensive line, it's like a housing project. <laughs> Third down and nine out of the shotgun. From the 29, it's Walker in motion. White. Most one, complete to the 40-yard line to Gordon Banks, and a first down at midfield. And a dangerous pass, but a good touch to Gordon Banks. 
Gordon Banks picked up crossing against the zone, working against Carson, and Danny White floated right over Carson and gets the completion. And it's a gain of 21. Ball just across midfield. Dallas has it at the Giants' 49-yard line. 8.48 to play in the period, no score. Herschel Walker is the sole running back in this set. Cosby is in motion. Herschel. Stopped after a gain of a half yard, maybe one. Herschel Walker. Stopped by Burt and Taylor. It'll be second down, nine. Herschel Walker has talked about wanting to carry the ball more here in Dallas. A good illustration there of his collegiate to the USFL to the NFL. And if you're Herschel Walker, that's not the way you want to see that going. You'd rather see a see an upward curve rather than down to only 10 carries a game. He's gone public, Herschel Walker has, saying he wants the ball more. 10's not enough. That's, of course, splitting the time with Tony Dorsett. Second down and nine, and right now they are the split backs in this set. Second and nine for the 48, and Walker makes the catch and gets hit at the 41-yard line, but the fumble came after the whistle. It'll be third down and two. He was hit by Banks and Parsons. And that's the one thing they're able to do with Walker. He may not be carrying as much, but he's certainly receiving more than he ever has. It's a hit from behind. Here comes Harry Carson in from the right. Carl Banks comes in and cleans up it. Harry Carson puts a good shot on Herschel Walker, but he was clearly down before the ball came loose. They do. They move him all over the field. They move him out to a wide position. They move him into a slot, and he can work almost like a flanker, but he still would like to carry the ball more from scrimmage. He caught 76 passes last year. Third and two. He carries here, and he gets the first down and a lot more. Inside the 30, run out of bounds at the 19-yard line by Terry Kinnor. 23-yard gain for Herschel Walker. Like all the great ones, he makes it look so easy, Dan. There was no opening where he wanted to go over to the five-hole. Took a good look there. Nothing happening. Carson stepped into it. Hill was up there, number 48. Steps to the outside. Gets a good block by Kelvin Edwards, the replacement player that made the Cowboys team and turned on the speed and gets inside the 20. And at the line of scrimmage, it was his pulling right guard, Crawford Kerr, who buried Kenny Hill. Herschel Walker give him a little bit of room and he's learned what to do with it. And it's Walker, not much room this time. He takes it to the 16 and he's tripped up by Jim Burt, the nose tackle. It'll be second and eight at the 16 yard line. Tom Landry, 28th year as the head coach of the Cowboys. And last year, seven and nine, this year at the 500 mark. Bill Parcells, meanwhile, in his fifth season. That's what he's been looking like in team meetings. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been talking to his team at all. And at home, second down and eight. Reverse, and that doesn't fool anybody. Cosby on the end around is stopped by Leonard Marshall. Giants sniffed that one out perfectly. Throwing for a loss back to the 21 and set up third down and long. Against the defense that reacts as well and runs as well as the New York Giants, a very difficult play to set up. That replay gives you an indication of how long it took for the play action inside to occur before Doug Cosby got his hands on the ball. And, of course, Leonard Marshall's a veteran. He knows his primary job is to stay home until he sees the ball going away. He played it well. Third down and 14. Blindside rush. White gets stacked but gets it off, and a flag yeah. goes down. Interference. All over him. Kenny Hill crawling all over Cosby, and Danny White took a wicked shot. Coming in on the blitz with Andy Hedden and nailed him. White held it, trying to get Cosby clear. Past interference, number 48 in the end zone. Kenny, Kenny Hill is six feet tall. He's covering a six foot six. Cosby was just shielding Hill away from the ball. Gets the flag. He could have called any number of things right there. <laughs> well, he picked one. It was interference, and it's a first down at the one-yard line. Two officials called it. First and goal, Newsom, the fullback, with Walker behind him, and there's Cosby for extra liberty. Walker bumps his way in for the score.
didn't take long to get their fans back, did it? No. And what happened on that play? He gets hit by Lawrence Taylor. Let's take a look at this. When Herschel Walker goes into the air, Lawrence Taylor launches himself at the same time. There's the hit. But look at Walker. Come back down. Stay on his feet. He sheds Taylor and gets into the end zone. That, hey, that's some kind of play, Frank. Oh, what a great one he is. Again, he always makes it look so easy. Good play by Lawrence Taylor. I would have nailed an ordinary back or an ordinary human being. There's no way Taylor could have played it any better. Roger Ruzek putting it through. And the Dallas Cowboys cash in on their second possession. Walker scores from the one. 5.52 left in the period. 7-0 Cowboys. After the kick, we're going to show you the play that Lawrence Taylor made down on the goal line. You know, a guy can score a touchdown without it being someone else's fault. And uh, two special plays that time on the goal line. One by Lawrence Taylor and the other, of course, by Herschel Walker, who ended up in the end zone for a Dallas Cowboy lead. But textbook illustration, how to play linebacker. And a pretty classic pair. <laughs> and he brings it back out to almost the 20-yard line, stopped by Vince Albritton. Let's take a look down on the goal line. Here's Timmy Newsom, the fullback. He's locked up with Harry Carson. These two are going to meet here. Here's Lawrence Taylor. He's free all the way on this guy, Walker. Watch them meet, but watch how it's Walker that keeps his feet. Carson will fill the middle when he sees Newsom go forward. There comes Harry. And then scraping right off is Lawrence Taylor into the air. Meets Herschel Walker, but Herschel has the athletic ability to come back down on his feet and get in the end zone. Now Morris is in the game, in the backfield, with Adams going in motion as the Giants take over at their own 20. And it's Joe Morris out to the 27-yard line. He is stopped there by number 50, Jeff Rohrer, the linebacker. So Morris didn't start, as Parcells indicated. He went with Roussan on the first series, but he's in the game early. His reasoning, a uh, good one. I think we all agreed to that when we talked to him today. Joe has had an ankle problem, a knee problem coming out of the St. Louis game. He felt that he, if he didn't start him, he would be better off putting him in a little later. If he started him and Joe had to leave, well, that might give the entire team a little bit of a letdown. And you can avoid that somewhat by bringing him in early in the game, taking a look, and then he can take him out. It doesn't hurt so much. On second and three, Morris again. Short of the first down by a yard, Jeff Cote and Rohrer converge on the tackle, so the Giants now faced with a third and one, and the Giants are still seeking their first first down of the game with 4.50 to go in the period. One of the many changes from this Super Bowl Giants team is the fact that George Adams is now starting in there, number 33, in place of Maurice Carthen. Now, Adams, a fine running back, a good receiver, but a good blocker also, but he gives you more versatility back there working with Joe Morris than they had with Carthen. Carson Rhythm. Third and one, two tight ends in the game. And through the middle is Joe Morris. And all he has to do is with a little scuffle breaking out. Some shoving and pushing with Rohrer and Jeff Coat involved on the cowboy end. And if the nose of the ball gets to the 30, it's a first down, and it's well past that point. First down to York. I think in some people, desperation breeds aggression. And each in their own way, these are two football teams that are desperate. The Cowboys are trying to get the respect of their fans and the other teams in the NFL back. The Giants, well, we know why they're desperate. They're right on the edge, emotionally in every way. First and ten, Giants in the 30-yard line. Sim wide open at the 45-yard line is Bavaro, and he is into Cowboy territory to the 48. Wide open on the sideline was the tight end, Mark. I, on the other hand, when I get desperate, I want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you don't eat, you graze. <laughs> Desperation manifests itself in many different ways and many different people. <laughs> you have been desperate much of your life. <laughs> uh, it's too late to stop now. Mark Bavaro giving the Giants a first down at the Dallas 48-yard line. 7-0 Cowboys. First period. Blocked by Morris, and then the pass is caught by Adams inside the 30 to the 24-yard line. That's one of the things we spoke of a moment ago. Adams gives you the versatility that maybe you don't have with Maurice Carson, who is more of a blocker than anything else. And here is Sims. He gets in a little bit of a problem down at the bottom. That is Roar coming in. And now watch him step back up. He wants to go downfield at this point. 
Nothing happening down there. He quickly looks off to the left, and there is Adams. And Adams, with that versatility, is floated into the flat, gave him the checkoff man, and gets the first down. And how about that block by Joe Moore? Absolutely. First down from the 23-yard line. And little Joe... Well, he doesn't like to be called, no. Joe, but you get the picture. He takes it to the 20-yard line. I say that only because Morris, at 5'7", 195, you saw that block on War, who is 6'2", and 230. You notice he didn't go for his throat, either. Yeah. <laughs> he went low and put him on the ground, and that really was the key to that play. That was a very lengthy pass pattern that George Adams ran, and it was because of Joe Morris's block on Jeff Rohr that gave Phil Sims an extra good two to three seconds. Second down and seven at the 20-yard line. Morris. Hit down at the 19 by Brooks. You saw the graphic a moment ago. Morris without a rushing touchdown this season. The Giants in all six games, counting the replacement games, the Giants have not scored a rushing touchdown in 1987. Not one. Joe was struggling in the first game as we look at the defensive coordinator. Ernie Stoutner for the Cowboys. He was taken out of that game early against the Bears, had a concussion in the game they lost against Dallas and was hurt again last week. Shotgun third and six from the 19. Galbraith is in the game. Jim steps up, throws complete to the 10-yard line of Lionel Manuel playing with a soft cast. A guy who caught two passes last week, both for touchdowns against St. Louis. He's got a broken navicula bone or in the left hand. He has that soft cast. And he still has the good moves. He moves behind Bavaro here. Bavaro attracting double coverage deep in. Right behind him comes Manuel. And it does hurt every time he catches that football and has to close his arms over. It is very painful. He caught a diving 38-yard touchdown pass last week against St. Louis. And he thought he had broken it again. But he gets the first down. Giants trying to cash in on an impressive drive. First and goal from just inside the 10. Morris takes the ball down to the 6, and that should be the final play of the first quarter. So Tom Landry has watched his team move effectively for a touchdown, but now watching his defense trying to stop a very effective giant march as the first period comes to an end for the second quarter at Texas Stadium in Irving with Dallas holding on 7 to nothing. Back, back for the second quarter of this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought Al Michaels with Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, the Giants driving second and goal at the six-yard line. Adams and Morris are the running backs. Sims going to the air. Sims going for the end zone, and a flag goes down. The intended receiver was Lionel Manuel. And Everson Walls was in the picture as well. And you had Bates covering Bavaro right alongside as the two receivers got very close together. How about Phil Sims directing traffic there a little bit before the snap of the ball? Illegal contact, number 24, half the distance, touchdown. They're booing partially, they're booing the penalty, and the other part of the booing is for Walls personally. Yeah, 10% because of the penalty, 90% because Everson was one of the more outspoken Cowboys during the strike, and I guess he and Jeff Rohr are the two favorite scapegoats of the fans here in Dallas. More than one poster here for Everson, but this guy's got it together. I don't know that that's really going to phase him a great deal. It is now second and goal. Double tight end set up with both Navarro and Moen on the right side. Adams in motion. Toss to Morris and driven by Eugene, the hitting machine, Lockhart, the middle linebacker. Lockhart is really turning into a leader of this defensive unit, and he read that beautifully, slid along behind the line of scrimmage, cut through the gap, and watch number 56, right in the middle of your screen, reading it all the way, reading Morris all the way, steps in behind the pulling guard, Billy Ard, and is absolutely clean getting to Morris. And that's where a middle linebacker can't make that mistake. He's faced with the option of continuing down the line of scrimmage or jumping into the backfield. If you jump into the backfield, don't be late. Don't miss it. That time, Eugene didn't. Time. Timeout called by Sims. Really angry, too. He has to waste one here. Well, he barely beat the 30-second clock. Did it by only a couple of seconds. Second and goal when we come back. 
Bill Partels on the sidelines, and he was really agitated. To, and Phil Sampson had to call that timeout. And I know that guy on the left. That's Billy Edwards. Now, I don't know who that guy in the blue jacket is, but that's our man, Billy Edwards, who got himself in the traffic down there. That's Don Orr, the field judge, who's getting an earful. Bill's complaining that they started the clock too early, and, of course, that forced to take a timeout. There wasn't any fault of the Giants, according to Bill Parcells. It is second down and goal now at the five. Dallas ahead 7-0, early second quarter. On a sweep, Morris. And Joe Morris is in for the score. Oh, he just ran right through Michael Downs. Sometimes he is down there so low, and he kind of squirts through there. Got a good block from George Adams. And it was Morris just squirting into the end zone. But Michael Downs is in position to make the play. You're going to see Michael, number 26, come in from the right side. But watch him be high. He's high, and look at Joe Morris duck down underneath it, and Downs doesn't even leave his feet. Joe yeah. Morris is a low man to begin with, and he was down there at... Uh, Shoestring level. Downs couldn't get that low. Allegra's check is good, so the Giants go 80 yards on this drive for the touchdown after the Cowboys had driven 72 for their score, and we're tied at seven. Giants needed this from Joe Morris, and he has been struggling, even though he had 88 yards last week against St. Louis. Again, watch Adams. Now he's lead, leading on the block here. A good block against Pace. Now watch this. Down goes Joe. He just inches off the carpet. There is Downs, number 26. Tried to take him high. You'll never do that against Joe Morris. Used his left arm to get down and elevate his body while his momentum carried him on into the end zone. Joe Morris using every part of his body to get into the zone that time. That's a nifty little run. That's good for Joe Morris and the Giants. Joe Morris, I think, really hurt in the running department when they lost Carl Nelson over the right side. He, of course, undergoing the Hodgkin's disease therapy. Chris Godfrey out with the knee over the right side. And those were the guys that really propelled Morris to a couple of great years the past couple of seasons. 1,800 yards last year, 1,500 the year before. Just amazing. And the stats you see have evened out, and that's because of the Giants in their last drive. Up to that point in time, it had been Dallas's first quarter. Defensively, they played well, but good, strong solid drive that time by New York. Delvin Edwards takes the ball at the nine-yard line, and a nice run back as he comes out to the 29-yard line, and the marker goes down. Delvin Edwards, they like him as a receiver, and it's against Dallas, so that'll move them back, and there he is. He was on the replacement team. He was a a New Orleans draft in 86, cut by the Saints again in camp this year. Hooked on with the Cowboys, and they love him. He can play. And he was going to be around a while. They really needed him here with Dallas, of course. They lost Mike Sherrard with a, a broken leg, and then they released Tony Hill, and then they were down to nobody, and all of a sudden they came up with a good-looking prospect in Kelvin Edwards. And he's not one of those guys that you can see. He got his opportunity to play during the strike, but the Cowboys had had him in for tryouts, and they were going to sign him regardless. The Cowboys were looking everywhere for wide receivers that already had Kelvin Edwards here in Dallas for a tryout. Had the, uh, really had the papers already drawn up when the strike came around. Edwards played, played well, earned a job. And they really had to revamp the receiving core. You recall they dumped Tony Hill, the injury to Sherrard. And now Edwards on the 45-man roster from the 11-yard line. And Tony Dorsett is stripped up. Great play by Carl Banks to shed a block and make the tackle. <laughs> he may not be as dramatic as Lawrence Taylor, but he does everything just about equally as well. So, now in his fourth year, he's just something very special out there. Frank, some linebackers take on the block at the line of scrimmage. That time, Carl Banks took on the block about three yards into the backfield. Look at Carl just lined up right here. Watch him get a field. And that's just an impossible situation for Herschel Walker. You can't make a block three yards in your own backfield. On second and 12, Banks makes the catch and has the first down out of the 23-yard line. Run out of bounds by Perry Williams. Gordon Banks. With a good move on Perry Williams. Got himself in a man-for-man -man situation. Danny White read it. Picked him out quickly and got it out there. As Perry Williams laid off a little further than he should have. And there is Williams. They are glad to have him back. They didn't 
know how seriously he was injured when he pitched a nerve in his neck in training camp and missed the first two games. Rod Barksdale is in the game as a wide receiver to the right on first half from the 23-yard line. And Herschel finds no room at all. A half dozen blue jerseys to push him back, led by George Martin, Pepper Johnson, and Carl Banks. Does a defensive coordinator like that? A warming defense, five Giants all over Walker. I referred to it earlier about the way the Giants were playing with intensity. Boy, look at him just shed the block of Chandler. Didn't give an inch. Stacks up the lead blocker, stacks up Walker, and then gets help from about six or seven of his buddies. Hey, that's... You know, the Giants got a pretty decent defense team. And Parcells has got their attention. <laughs> Second and eight from the 25-yard line for the Cowboys. And White throws it, and it's kicked <laughs> off by Lawrence Taylor, and he's down to the 10-yard line. Leonard Marshall put the pressure on and forced it, and then Taylor with the intercept, and the Giants are in business. An unbelievable play by Lawrence Taylor, who stands right on the line of scrimmage and is blocked by left tackle Mark Tuane. But how did he catch it? Danny White, of course, with number 70 to your right, right in his face, did probably not, did not even see Lawrence Taylor. But it hit him, and somehow or other he was able to handle the ball. It was traveling at pretty good velocity, but he held on to it. Lawrence Taylor right on the line of scrimmage with a big tackle right in his face. Just had the ball fly to him and stick like it was on fly paper. It is first down and full at goal since the nose of the ball is on the 10-yard line. Morris stopped by Bates and Lockhart after a gain of about three. It'll be second down and goal. The Giants scoring a touchdown on their last drive. And that's their first rushing touchdown of the year. Incredibly, it took the Giants 25 quarters to score a rushing touchdown this season. See a Lawrence Taylor play a football game, you can understand why Cornelius Bennett would be so valuable. Somebody would want that type of football player. He makes such a difference on a football field. And we had a five-yard penalty against the Giants negating that game by Morris on the last play. Back to the 15-yard line. First down and goal. Adams in motion. Sacked at the 24-yard line, bursting through is Mike Hickman. Let's take a look at Mike Hickman as he comes in from the bottom of your screen. And one key to this play, as far as Mike is concerned, it's a lot easier when nobody blocks you. Watch him move right on up field. And some breakdown in the New York offensive scheme. You see William Roberts, the right tackle, stayed to the inside. It's tough to tell whether or not Mike Hegman is this guy, but Hegman alertly realized he was unblocked and went in and got a clean sack. Second down, goal from the 22. Very good protection. And then Adams makes the catch and is tackled at the six-yard line from behind by Hegman. Nice grab by Adams. How does Phil Sims, Frank, get the ball to George Adams? Number one, he had a lot of protection. He looks deep downfield. He's looking deeper for Bavaro. He was covered over the middle, and he checks off and throws a shot out to Adams. Absolutely perfect because he was so well covered. Gets away from Hagman. But this, again, is the extra dimension, dimension that you get with George Adams. He caught six last week against St. Louis. And he's already collected a couple of key ones tonight. Giants trying to go ahead. Game time is seven. Third and goal at the seventh. Sacked by Jones. Ed too tall Jones drives him down back at the 17-yard line. Good coverage by the Cowboys. Sims had time, but no receiver. Let's take a look at the big man, also.
six feet nine inches. Here's Ed Jones. He's going to work upfield against William Roberts. But the key here, as Frank said, the coverage downfield. Remember the last play. Phil Sims stood there, stood there, and found George Adams. This time, Phil stayed there too long. You can't really expect your offensive line to keep him out that long. 35-yard attempt by Raul Alegre is true. Alegre from the 25-yard line has given the Giants the lead after the interception by Taylor. 10-13 to play in the half. New York on top by three. So, coming up from Houston, Captain Aaron Jenkins at the controls. <laughs> Unique sort of look at the blip above the the Demi Dome. <laughs> there is room for the noise to get out of this one. <laughs> yeah, right. And the moisture to get in. <laughs> where it stays. 10 to 7 as the Giants have taken the lead after the Cowboys drew first blood. CBS and NBC love the televised game from here. <laughs> yeah. That shadow coming across there, you have half of it in the dark and half of it in the light. It's also, on a sunny day, one of the hottest stadiums in the league because there's no air circulation on the field at all. I've been high those things. We love it. Yeah. Dehydration is a real pro problem for the players when they play here during the day, but it could be a prettier night to play football than tonight. Allegra's kick. Kelvin Edwards fields at the nine. And he takes it back out to the 24-yard line. Stopped by Robbie Jones, number 51. And let's have another look at that Taylor interception, which led to the New York field goal. We looked at it from the reverse angle the first time. Let's take a look at it this time from the sideline down on players level. See Lawrence right on the line of scrimmage fighting off Mark Tuane. And Danny White just never saw Lawrence Taylor because all he could see was the white shirt of Tuane, whose back was to him. But really the key play here was the series by the Cowboys defensively only giving up the field goal. Lawrence tries to turn the corner and then gets bumped out of bounds as he crosses the 25-yard line. Tony Dorsett, the second oldest running back in the league. And let's take a look at combined yards. That is rushing yardage, receiving yardage, and return yardage. Kickoffs, punts, and also fumble return yardage. Peyton, uh, the leader by a lot. Jim Brown second, and Dorsett moving in on the former Cleveland fullback in spot number three. And of course, the big difference between the two is that Tony has so many more receiving yards than Jim Brown, who's receiving skills, maybe weren't utilized, but whatever the case, he didn't catch the ball. 45 pounds smaller. Second down and eight with Walker as a wide receiver in this set. And Timmy Newsom making the catch and hit down at the 28-yard line. And the other thing, when you compare Jim Brown with the others, is he played when there was a 12-game schedule. And Tony Dorsett, for most of his career, has played with a 16-game schedule. Line, the line I like best about Jimmy Brown is he was criticized for not catching. Let's take a look at this. We'll get back to the Jimmy Brown story. Do we see a face mask as Newsom heads up field? That's Carl Banks. Oh, clearly. He's got it and doesn't let go. Carl Banks putting a little stress on the neck of Tim Newsom. Whoa. Third down and six from the 28-yard line. And Danny White going deep for Kelvin, who makes the catch at the 37-yard line. But there Kelvin will be, Edwards. They'll be holding on that. It'll come back. And there is Carl. the down at the 20, and why in so signal. Carl Banks on the blitz. Not sure who picked him up, but they were right on top of it. If you're a Cowboy fan, this this is a blow. Danny White couldn't have thrown the ball any better. Let's get the call from Freddie Wyant. Holding number 61, third down. Remember earlier in the game, we saw Banks come in. They come in from the blitz right between the guard and the center. He's in there once again, and this time Newton has to try to pick him up. Now, and has to hold him to do it. Well, what happened is Newton's feet got tangled up with Tom Rafferty, the center, and as he goes down, he drags Banks with him. But look at the touch on this pass from Danny White to Kelvin Edwards. Mark Collins became disoriented, didn't know where the ball was, and you just, if you ran it all the way down there and handed it to him, you couldn't do it any better than that. Third and 15 from the 19 after a 35-yard gain was wiped out. 
incomplete, but short of the first down out at the 31-yard line. Banks makes the catch, but the Giants doing a good job to keep him from getting the extra three yards. Terry Kennard in on the stop, and Dallas is forced to punt. And Terry Kennard is coming off the field holding his left arm. He was the one that made that tackle that stopped the first down. Stephen Baker, one of the rookies for the Giants, and a fellow that Dallas really wanted in the draft and because of a mix-up didn't get. He winds up with the Giants and he'll wind up returning this kick as Saxon gets ready to punt. Giants trying to set up a return. From the 27, Baker stops at the 32-yard line by a passel of Cowboys, and there's Kennard on the bench as the offense takes over after a 41-yard kick and a five-yard return. That's pretty amazing when you think about it. Terry Kennard in his fifth year against Dallas, eight interceptions against all other teams, a total of ten. He loves to play against the Cowboys. He had three in the first game, the first loss. The Giants have to Dallas. Giants take over at their own 33 on first and ten. Ten open is Manuel and first down as he takes it out to the 49-yard line. Everson Walls with the coverage. And once again, Joe Morris, I think you picked it up, Dan. He made a terrific block to enable him to get rid of that football. He, he makes a play action fake, and then Joe breaks all the way back to his left to give Phil Sims more time. And if you take a look at some of Phil's past successes against the Cowboys, but off to a roaring start today, six for seven. Pass past non-successes, really. Oh. <laughs> Stacy Robinson in motion. This is Adams in the Cowboy territory and rolled down as he reaches the 46-yard line. And a marker is down at the line of scrimmage. The one thing about Phil Sims is this is a different Phil Sims than the Cowboys have seen with the exception of the game earlier. Illegal motion, number 81. He sets the Super Bowl record for passing efficiency in their win over Denver. Then last week, he sets the Giants' regular season record, throwing for nearly 81%, 17 of 21, three touchdown passes against St. Louis. This guy has truly come into his own as one of the top three or four quarterbacks in the NFL. Closing in on a lot of Charlie Connolly's records, completions, he could pass that this year, yardage. He has come into his own, and more importantly, he struggled through the first few years, and he has had four consecutive seasons now, but he's been totally healthy. First and 15 with manual in motion, and Morris takes the ball into Dallas territory to the 49-yard line, stopped by Roar and Walls. It'll be second down at about nine. A lot of empty seats tonight at Texas Stadium. In fact, without the sellout, the game is blacked out. Our local affiliate is showing blazing saddles tonight. Mel Brooks is the coach. Dean Wilder, Wilder at quarterback. Saddles. Alex Harris. <laughs> I love that toll booth. Remember the toll booth in the desert? <laughs> I like Count Basie out in the desert. When they knocked out that horse, that was a real horse. <laughs> horse and a half. Second and seven, Adam to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and about three. Well, didn't you love that toll booth? <laughs> I did. <laughs> But that slim picking? <laughs> All right, enough of the movie. <laughs> well, then take it off your monitor. <laughs> Parcells pacing as his team is faced with a, a third and a long three here. He has not talked to these players whatsoever. Other than just individually once in a while, he is trying to focus something on himself, and that is get their anger and get, get his focus off the strike. And he's been very successful with it. Runs his way to a first down on the 31-yard line. Tackled by Bill Bates, so he improvises first down Giants. There he is again. You get the feeling that's what he's been trying to do. He's always thinking, always trying to do something, and when the players came back, everybody was angry. They were upset over losing their pay. They were upset with each other. They were upset with Lawrence Taylor for coming in. And so he's tried to change the focus, and he's been fairly successful at that. Players have been joking a little bit about it, but he's got their attention, and they've played that way tonight. Technically on defense, they have been swarming all over. Sims with his longest run of the season, 14. At the 32-yard line. 
Joe Morris is taken down by Mike Hegman, number 58. Hegman, the second oldest linebacker in the National Football League. The only one who would be longer in the tooth would be uh, Steve Nelson. Hegman's been around 12 years, and here is a former teammate, a collegiate teammate of Mike Hegman. This is Ed Jones, both of them out of Tennessee State over a decade ago, and they've been playing on that left side for so many years together. Second and 14, Giants ahead by three. 4.53 to go in the half. Pressure, sack at the 42-yard line. Jeff Warren with help from Jesco to finish him off. That time, Jeff Rohr was working against Joe Morris, who's been doing almost as much blocking tonight as he has been running, and it occurs to the backside of Sims, and Jeff persevered, stayed on his feet, and got in and got the sack. Dallas is so predictable on second and long yardage. They almost invariably are going to come with some kind of a blitz. I was surprised that Morris was even in there. Certainly the Giants are aware of that. Third and 21, and it's Galbraith time. Out of the shotgun. Galbraith number 30. Stays in the block, and then Sims throws too high for Adams. Don Smirk really leveled Tim. He tried to get it out there, but he had no chance whatsoever. And this Dallas defense is alive, and they have turned this crowd on. Well, it was a dual safety blitz. Bill Bates, number 40, and that's Vince Albritton, 36. Albritton comes clean. Phil Sims sees him. He's coming straight at him and forces Phil to unload the ball early, and he doesn't have much on it, no chance of completing it. Frank talked about it the play before. Second and long, third and long. The Cowboys are going to come with at least one safety and maybe both as they did that time. John Lendetta, a slightly errant snap, but he angles it, and he is... Oh, oh no. He's in the end zone for a touchback. Just in there. Came so close to perfection. Greg Lasker tried to down it, but too late. So out it comes to the 20. 4-12 to play in the half. And we've also got a penalty marker or a discussion about the touchback call. Let's see. Well, somebody dropped the flag at the five-yard line, right at the sideline. So Fred Wyatt telling us the call is against the Giants, and now he'll discuss the options with Cosby. Parcel says, what? <laughs> So Parcells hooked up with his assistant coaches. Ron Earhart is the offensive coordinator, high overhead. Mike Pope. We have illegal touching by number 42. Stepped out of bounds and came back in first touching. They refused the penalty. First down. Darrell Clack illegally. You can't go out of bounds and come back in. Once you're out of bounds, you're out of the play. And he's way out. So Greg Lasker. Yeah, it was they said 42. It was really 46. It was 46. It was against Lasker, who was out of bounds, came back in and caught the ball. That's a no-no. Whatever the penalty was, Dallas wasn't going to flirt with letting Landetta punt again, so they take it first and ten. From the 20. Fumble and recovered by Dallas back at the 12-yard line. It was Taylor who came in and forced it, and then Tom Rafferty covered up. He can go so far, so quickly. He had to go way around his man. Those linebackers, they would have taken a much slower time getting there. Danny White thought he had the time, and he just didn't. It's just the sheer speed of Taylor coming around, literally from the backside, stripping the football, and fortunately, they were able to cover it. Cowboys are doing the right thing. They're putting an offensive lineman on Lawrence Taylor. That time it was Mark Duane, the left tackle, but sometimes it takes two offensive linemen or... One tackle and one back to slow down Lawrence Taylor. Second and 18 from the 12. And they keep it on the ground, and Herschel Walker doesn't go very far. Stopped by Jim Burt. Lawrence Taylor standing right on the line of scrimmage there. 2 and 8 comes out to pick him up, and that's just a question of sheer speed. He beats 2 and 8 to the corner, and Danny White, being the right handed quarterback, has. No idea, and I can't think of anything I would rather not be than a right-handed quarterback playing against the Giants, knowing that Taylor is always coming from your blind side. 
Not that much fun being a left-handed quarterback. <laughs> yeah, at, least, at least you see it. At least you see the headlights before you get run over. <laughs> Third and 16. And it's Renfro who gets open in the seam and has the first down at the 40-yard line. So they turn a third and 16 into a first down. Another perfect pass by Danny White to it. Into the zone. Renfro, give him credit. He got open, but Danny White had to go over a man with the perfect touch, and he's going two or three tonight like this. Right over the arms of Pepper Johnson, right into the hands of Renfro. And he's been heavily criticized here in Dallas for being erratic. A lot of people feel that the Cowboys' problems are because of Danny White, and I think his touch on the football tonight has been superb. The only bad pass, the interception that he threw to Lawrence Taylor. It's Stuart set after the 40-yard line for a gain of one on a first down play. It's now second down and nine, and we are down to the two-minute warning. So we've got two minutes to go. A Homer Hankey escapes from the Metrodome. Cowboys have all of their timeouts remaining. As they go in the half, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff at Texas Stadium, where the New York Giants lead the Dallas Cowboys 10-7. And as we come back, it is second down and nine for the Cowboys from their own 40-yard line, and they have all their timeouts remaining. They have Renfro split left and Banks to the right. Second and nine. White dumps it off. No, he was in the grass. He was in the grasp of George Martin, and the play was whistled dead by Fred Wyant for the sack. There's a second part to that phrase, and it's called in the grasp and control of the defensive lineman or linebacker, whatever the case might be. And that time, Freddie Wyant, the referee, made the decision that George Martin had Danny White both in the grass and control. And a lot of people in Dallas aren't going to like that call. They're very quick to call that, however. They seldom wait until they get in control because sometimes when they get in control, it's history for the quarterback. Well, then change the rules. <laughs> Might not be a bad idea. Ten-yard sack, third and 19 from the 29. Green is caught by Kelvin Edwards, and he's out to the 37, and now the Giants can take a timeout if they so choose. Remember, the Giants had to spend one, so they have two. And the clock is running right now, down to 111. And the, the Giants apparently will take their time out. On that play, Lawrence Taylor was on the blitz. He was almost into the backfield, into Danny White. And yet he was the one that made the tackle on the receiver. Rem That's speed. Remarkable hustle by Lawrence Taylor. And the Giants do take a timeout. They looked over to the bench, and then Parcells says, take it here to conserve a little bit of time. So we have 112. The Giants will get the ball back after the punt, and when they get it back, they have one timeout left in the half. Giants by three, 112 to go in the half. Again, when New York gets the ball back, they've got one timeout remaining. Tom Landry watching Saxon now drop back the punt. And Stephen Baker is back for the Giants, standing at his own 17, and now moving up a couple of yards. Again, Saxon, the league leader in net punting. Good snap. And a very good pick. A real beauty. Baker at the eight. Escapes one man. And gets hit down at the 13-yard line by Jeff War, number 50, who's been all over the field, both on defense and on special teams. 55-yard punt. 613 with 101 to play in the half. And Simpson the shotgun. And he gives it to Galbraith. And then Galbraith takes it after the 18. Fumble. And he fumbles. And we'll wait for an official signal. Randy White's on his way off the field. He thinks the Cowboys have it, but you know they're going to be tackling that football down there. Well, who had it going in doesn't necessarily mean that'll be who has it coming out. Well, how about that? The Giants decide they're going to basically run the clock out after the beautiful punt by Saxon, even though they lined up in the shotgun, keep it on the ground, and cough it up. Well, they were almost forced into that decision. They only have one timeout. Just the simple play out of shotgun, the underneath handoff 
to Tony Galbraith, and let's see who makes the hit. Oh, Jesse Penn, the first guy in there, Vince Albright, and clearly the ball comes out before the knees of Galbraith hit the field, and Dallas down by three, has lots of time, 51 seconds and all three timeouts left. So at the 18 now, the Cowboys, first and 10, send Banks to the left. Line up with a double tight end setup with Crosby in motion and Dorsett starting to move forward. <laughs> and Danny White says Banks. <laughs> Banks and Dawson coming right over the top. He started to move forward to Tony after the encroachment had begun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as Carl Banks performs the half gainer off of the low board. Degree of difficulty, about a 10. Style points, about a 9. A big splash, though, when he took Danny White with him. Somehow, encroachment doesn't fit that picture. <laughs> about <Annihilation>. mugging. <laughs> Annihilation. <laughs> First and five at the 13-yard line. White for Cosby. Stopped at the eight-yard line. Again, the Cowboys have all of their timeouts. And they elect to use their first one here. That will stop the clock with 38 seconds. And they may have picked up the first down. I think they are close. What are they, about a yard short? Yeah, about a yard shy. It'll be just inches to go. Second and inches. Marcel's really grimacing on the sidelines. The one thing a running back has got to be aware of in a situation like that is cover up that football. Tony Galbraith tried to add a little extra yardage by breaking back inside, drew a crowd, the ball came slipping out. But when you're around uh, for 12 years, as Tony has been, you've got to be so conscious of that football, and you can see Parcells is hot. Mm. Right now, Dallas, offensively, they have the luxury, as we look at what's coming up this coming Saturday, Stanford Paz comes to New York. <laughs> He may buy Manhattan. <laughs> Second down, inches from the nine. Audible. And White throwing complete to the three-yard line to Mike Renfro. And that's the first down. And the clock keeps going. And that's an audible all the way. As Dallas takes a timeout. But Danny White looking at the giant blitz right in his face. A linebacker in every gap. You can see clearly audibles at the line of scrimmage. Look what Danny White sees. Pepper Johnson, Carl Banks. His line slides, and Frankie makes the play along with Renfro. And Renfro reading right along with him. His perfect coordination. You get man-on-man -man coverage. That's Collins coming back into the play, but he had to play off Renfro a little bit because he was on him man-for-man. -man. Good coordination. And again, Danny White. The only thing he has ever done wrong, I think, is perhaps following the footsteps of the legendary Roger Sawback. Pretty impressive numbers right there for the half. 11 of 13. And a real key for Dallas on this drive was the fact that they had all their timeouts at their disposal, which means they can use the middle of the field. If they were down to one timeout, they're forced to going into the end zone or using the sidelines. But by having three, hey, they're, they're not afraid to work the middle of the field as, as we've seen to Cosby and Renfro. First and goal with Walker in motion. Takes to Newsom. Walker is out into the pattern, and the pass is oh, caught yeah. for the touchdown by Cosby. He's six six, and he had to do a real toe dance to pull that baby in and stay in the end zone. Back at the back of the end zone, when you're six six, you can do what Danny White did. He hung it up there, and Cosby, an athletic six six, went up and got it. There was no giant that could cover it. Take a look at it again. Again, good protection. A little play action down there. Didn't mean much. Looked out to the right. Cosby on the back line. Good athletic move. Comes down. Both feet inbound. He is right there. Good call. And Galbraith's touchdown. I mean, Galbraith's fumble translates into a Dallas touchdown. And that fumble was recovered by Jesse Penn for the record. As Roger Ruzak has set for the extra point. And that's good. 
And so the Cowboys are able to cash in. Cosby had not scored a touchdown against the Giants in his last five games. What's interesting is he scored five in the five previous games that the Cowboys played against the Giants. So he was hot, and then he cooled off, and then he scores again here. He had six receptions last week against Philadelphia, so he has come back and is in full gear. But again, that goes right back to Galbraith's fumble, one that should never happen. It will happen, but when you're in a situation like that, you cover the football, think nothing about gaining yards. You're just trying to run that clock out. And it is the kind of play that will age coaches rather quickly. He, he could eat the Gatorade bucket right now. There is no Gatorade bucket anymore. to 10 the Cowboys on top to kick off with 26 seconds and the Giants with one timeout and you would suspect they'll just run the clock out if uh, they don't run the kickoff back to midfield or beyond Roussan and Adams are back deep that's Roussan on the left and Ruzek to kick off clock starts with the ball touches the receiver's hand Doesn't even start here as it goes into the end zone. We got to cover that. And he does cover it. Rosan going back. <laughs> made that a little tougher than it had to yeah. be. <laughs> Parcells would have eaten a Gatorade truck if they had to cover that one. <laughs> Look at that. You cannot believe that one. Those are not loving glances being mm -hmm. cast towards his own end zone. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Tom Landry watching his team move ahead after the fumble by Galbraith. They move into the touchdown, and the Giants setting up to run the clock out now. With McConkey as the safety valve. And the Cowboys have seen this before. Last time it was with Randall Cunningham. <laughs> yeah. uh, this will have a different result, though. So... All of a sudden, at least at the moment, the Cowboys have won the fans back. A standing O for their Cowboys. And, of course, you become their Cowboys when you lead by four. <laughs> and back deep, number 22 is Lee Roussan, and 33 is the new starting fullback, George Adams. With Roger Ruzek to kick off for the Dallas Cowboys. Again, Dallas coming in with a mark of six and three. And the Giants one and five. And Washington on top in the NFC East with a mark of six and one. Ruzek kicks it down to the three. Lee Rusan stopped out at the 25-yard line, and the first man he runs into for the Cowboys is Jesse Penn, who recovered that fumble at the end of the first half. We've seen a lot of great defensive play on both sides of the line tonight, but Lawrence Taylor's been spectacular in the first half. He does so many things. Let's watch him here. This is a pressure by Marshall and the interception by Taylor. And he also, with the great speed, can come around blockers, as he does Mark Tuanay, and cause fumbles, as he does right here. It's uh, it's nothing new. I'd like to say the board isn't that something special. Yes, it is something special, but it's not something new. He does it every week. Sims on first and ten from the 25. Over the middle, hits Morris, and Morris is hit down at the 33-yard line by Ron Francis, the rookie cornerback. It's a gain of eight. It'll be second down and two for the Giants. You don't see a lot of Joe Morris coming out of the backfield as receivers. As a matter of fact, they have been using him in there, even on passing situations tonight, and he's been a pretty good blocker. There are the stats from the first half. Turnovers equal, but the one by the Giants, Tony Galbraith, set up the final Cowboys score. Second down, a yard and a half from the 34-yard line. Manual in motion. And with a basic free play, they go to the air. A marker goes down. Adams made the catch. He's got the first down, but a flag is thrown. And it was William Roberts, obviously, against Ed Jones. 
he just pulled Ed Jones right down to the carpet. And unfortunately, he did it right in front of the head linesman. Hold him. Hold him back. Take him back. Yeah. Let's take a look at it from the bottom. Here's Ed Jones. Watch him working upfield against William Roberts. Ed already off the line of scrimmage. If you're an offensive tackle, that's a big help having him already a yard off the ball. But Roberts that time just not ready. Standing at the line of scrimmage flat-footed. And when Jones comes to him, he had really nothing else to do other than drag him to the ground, which he did. Telling big shoes, those of the Carl Nelson over right tackle. Second and 11 from the 24-yard line. Morris. And the Cowboys read that one perfectly. Mike Hegman is right there at the bottom of the pile along with Kevin Brooks. And that time Mike Hegman going nose to nose with Mark Bavaro who has been not a factor at all in tonight's game and just single blocking and Mike Hegman beats Bavaro cleanly to the inside and makes the play for no gain whatsoever. I pose the question where is Mark Bavaro? He's not been a part of the Giants offense tonight. Blitz down for the Cowboys. They've been doing it consistently in the first half. Third down and long. Third and 11. Jones is there. Got a hand in. And Tuchel gets the sack. They did that without the blitz. Randy White, Kevin Brooks, and Ed Jones. And again, working on William Roberts. Ed's going to go upfield. Look how he gets Roberts' shoulders turned. Easy to throw your man. Back to the inside comes Tuchel. When you get an offensive tackle who turns his shoulders away from the line of scrimmage, he's susceptible to being slapped so you can go back inside. Sean Landetta to punt. Kelvin Edwards backs up, fields at his 23. And brings it back out to the 35-yard line. And from there, will the Cowboys take possession for the first time? In the second half, 12 29 to go in the third quarter. Down by Michelob Light. When the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Beautiful shot from the Goodyear Blimp looking toward downtown Dallas, Texas. Building another Dallas out here. Los Colinas area growing every time we come back and then something else is going up in the air. Gorgeous night. Temperature in the low 70s. And the Dallas Cowboys on top by a score of 14 to 10 as they take over at their own 35-yard line, first and 10. And there has been a serious mood swing with those in attendance here at Texas Stadium tonight. They opened up by lustily booing the Cowboys when they came out for warm-ups. They were, I guess, a little less uh, in the booing mood at the beginning of the game, and right now they are on their feet when the Cowboys make a big play. Football in Texas, synonymous. And fans, tickle anywhere. They are working on Fred Wyant's mic, and that's the reason for the little extra delay here, and now we're ready to go. 12.29 to play, third quarter. Maybe a little more so here, Dan. We were down here a couple of weeks ago, and now we're doing the World Series, and they had 60,000 here for the replacement team. They had more for the replacement team than I believe they have here tonight. We're very close. You're right. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Walker in motion. And the handoff to Tony Dorsett, and he can't go anywhere. Jim Burton was right there to stop him initially, and then George Martin to fly the good across. Jim Burt defensively for the Giants, a guy who's going to be playing with a lot of enthusiasm and intensity because for the first time, he's really having to split his playing time equally with Eric Howard. And Jim Burt being the veteran ball player and Eric Howard only in his second year, uh, every veteran on every team in the league knows what that means. You better play up to a certain level or you're going to be on the bench. Uh, second and nine for a set behind a block from Newsom. Cuts back the other way, and Tony's not going very far. He is wrapped up by Harry Carson, 53. Giants number one against the rush a year ago, and they're playing tough again tonight. Let's take a look at Burt in the middle. He'll track to Crawford Kerr, Rafferty. 
tell you, when you play that nose tackle, they come from every angle. And it is so noisy. It is so noisy and so dangerous. Right now, Jim Burt is coming out of the ball game as Eric Howard checks in. George Martin out as well. And Jim's not real pleased with the present setup. He's such a tremendous competitor. But yet, Eric Howard is a potential superstar on the defensive line. Bill Parcells loves the guy and admires his toughness. Says he might be the meanest guy I got. Third and nine from the 37-yard line. Walker in motion. Movement. And it was Crawford Kerr, number 68, who lifted up. That's an easy one to call. Ball start for 68. Confirmed by Wyatt. And that's going to make it third down and 14 now with 11 minutes remaining in the period. And here's how Dallas has fared tonight on third and mostly long. You'll notice they're all completions with the exception of the one run. Even though you don't get the first down, at least you get some yardage before you have to punt. Third and 14. And over the middle for Banks at the 45-yard line. No. No catch. Incomplete. That's one of the few poorly thrown balls tonight by Danny White. Perhaps the first one that he has really thrown poorly because he had Banks open. He probably would have been short of the first down, but he should have had it in there, and he didn't. He threw the ball back behind as we look at it from behind Danny White, but Banks had made his cut moving to the left, and as you can see, Gordon had to come back to his right to make a play on the football. That ball was a good two yards off target by Danny White. Mike Saxon, third year in the league at a San Diego State, and doing a great job for Dallas. Fair catch full for at the 29-yard line by McConkey. And a look at White as the Giants take over after a 38-yard Saxon boot. Dallas by four. Economics major from Western University, Bill Belichick, very bright defensive coordinator for the New York Giants, came in 79, still one of the youngest ones around, making a few adjustments on the sidelines. All those brains, and he's scribbling on a board down on the ground. <laughs> Football is a great sport, isn't it? <laughs> Communications have come a long way. <laughs> from the 30, it's Joe Morris for a game of two. I'll tell you one thing, Dan. You better keep doing a great job with that telestrator because we're happy to announce that Tim McCarver has re-signed with ABC, and we mentioned that, our great baseball analyst. Because we don't want to be scooped. That's well, why we mentioned it. <laughs> we struck a deal. I don't do World Series. He doesn't do Super Bowls. Uh, we're, <laughs> we, are, we are thrilled to have Tim back with us. He's in Spain right now, so he's not privy to this announcement, unless he's listening in on a satellite somewhere. I think everyone at ABC certainly is delighted to have Tim with us. You bet. One of the best. To the 33 yard line goes Joe Morris, and it will be third down and seven. Kevin Brooks in on the tackle. Something Fun, lively, perky. You know, you just kind of add something special. Mm -hmm. I think it's something about playing for the Cardinals, football or baseball. You know, oh. I think it's. Uh, oh. Must be something in that muddy water. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to see what you came up with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> third down, third and seven at the 32. You and Reggie went to Arizona State, right? <laughs> uh, from the 32 it's Sims throwing out to the 41 and a first down and the catch made by the rookie Stephen Baker who played at Fresno State and he played there with Kevin Sweeney who is on what amounts to the taxi squad now of the Dallas Cowboys well, Kevin Sweeney was a star for the Dallas Cowboys as their replacement quarterback again good protection for Phil almost as if you would draw it on a board he steps up right into the pocket and fires the shot. That's the line of vision you want when you're throwing an inside pattern is to have the pocket move past you, be open up the middle, and that's exactly what Phil Sims does. First down from the 41-yard line. And Sims throws, and there's Bavaro making the catch, and he steps out of bounds a little shy of the first down marker, and it means a, a free play, and that's coming up for the Giants because it's going to be second and one. Dan was mentioning it a moment ago. He wondered where Bavaro was. Bavaro has had a reoccurrence of a problem of a year ago that really troubled him a year ago, and that is not a sprained foot, but a kind of a nerve problem in his foot. It's bothered him uh, not as much as it did a year ago, but I'm sure it has been affecting his play. 
He lines up on the right side on second down and one. And Sims is going to use this free play to go deep. Very deep. And the catch is made for the oh. touchdown. Lionel Manuel. So Phil Sims second and one. And it's a free one, so why not? And Manuel got free, and he's in for the score to put the Giants on top. What a grab. And there is that hand in the cast, the left hand, and he just puts on the sprint. And he runs right by the rookie, Ron Francis. Michael Downs helping on the inside, but he didn't bother to put on a move. And he comes down trying to protect that left hand that he nevertheless fell on, rolled on. And it is very painful. But a beautiful pass, I might add, also. Right into double coverage. Francis Downs both there. So with that broken bone in his wrist and the rest of the two TV catches last week, one tonight, Allegre's kick is good. 8.31 to go in the period. Great read by Manuel because he did not put any kind of move on. He read the double coverage. Any kind of a move, and Michael Downs might have been there to make the difference. The Giants go out in front. Two touchdowns a week ago against St. Louis. A big one tonight. But a good read by Manuel and a good read by Phil Sims and a well-thrown ball. Allegre's kick is a line drive taken at the six by Edwards. And he comes out past the 30 and to the 35. And that's what's going to happen a lot if he kicked the ball as low as Allegri did. One of the prettiest parts of the pro game is that long pass, as we saw from Sims to Manuel. And that's, I don't know that there's a more exciting play in the game. And it's put the Giants up front 17 to 14. Let's take a look at Lionel. Nothing fancy about this. Francis doesn't read that he's going to run the fly pattern. He's beaten badly, and Michael Downs too far to the inside. And, well, that's just that's as pretty as it gets. So now the Cowboys trailing by three at their own 35-yard line. First and ten. Fake to Walker. Pass is batted away one-handed by Mark Collins, second-year corner. At a Cal State Fullerton, Mike Renfro, the intended receiver down the sideline, second and ten. I think a quarterback doesn't like to hit that long pass. Watch him. He's watching it all the way. Will he get it? You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> There's his version of the shimmy shimmy Coco Bop. <laughs> Coco Bop? He's an enthusiastic <laughs> ball player. He's turned into a leader. He's all... He's all fired up about this whole challenge, as he calls it, to get this team back into the playoffs. Second and ten. Walker, nice move to escape Pepper Johnson, and then he takes it out to the 47-yard line. Johnson had him shadowed, and then Walker cut back to the inside and turns what would have been a five-yard gain into a 12-yard pickup. Can do a lot of things. I mentioned those 76 receptions of a year ago. And we also mentioned earlier, if you weren't with us, that both Walker and Tony Dorsett are grumbling about not getting more action carrying the football. They're carrying them in the teams rather than in the 20s. And both of them like to be in the 20s. And Dallas, after losing the lead, is putting a good drive together. First and 10. Walker again. Nothing cooking this time. Giants break up the play, led by LT and Kenny Hill. Well, there's another myth about LT. You don't run the best place to run is to run at him that time they ran right at him and he nailed her to walker right at the line of scrimmage lost a couple of yards on he stepped across and stepped right into walker if i'm an offensive coordinator and i'm going to attack the new york giants i think i'd be more inclined to hit go with quicker hitting plays rather than the slower developing plays that are moving parallel to the line of scrimmage so many big, strong athletes who run so well, and they're not working. Second and 13, Walker makes the catch, and his forward progress takes him out to the 49-yard line. It'll be third down and eight. Meanwhile, Tony Dorsett, there he is tonight. Look at that, one net yard. And that would be an average of 0.14. <laughs> That's probably happened in the past, but Tony's complaining about as but Herschel is complaining about. Give it to me 14 times. I'm going to break one for 25, 30, or 40 yards. Well, new people in the offensive line, plus working against the New York Giants. A couple of contributing factors, but tough to win a football game when you rush for those kind of averages. Third and seven from the 50. 
off balance throw to Newsom. And he makes the catch, but comes up well short of the first down. Stopped by Kenny Hill. And that'll force Dallas to kick. I think Dorsett and Walker have problems. What about Newsom? They're fighting over how many times they carry it. Newsom never even gets to smell it. Well, not one of my big favorites. The uh, third and 13 and throwing a one-yard pass. In fact, that pass was actually caught at the line of scrimmage. It was a good effort by Newsom to pick up any yardage at all, but hard-pressed to, to see the, uh, the wisdom in throwing a pass that really has no chance of getting a first down for you. The sure-handed McConkie to accept the kick from Mike Saxon. McConkie stands at the 10. Giants try to set up the return. It's a low-line drive, angle kick. McConkie from the 15. And he brings it back to the 24-yard line. So the Giants will take over at the 24. 5 24 to play. Third quarter, New York on top by a field goal. As the offensive playboard, not been too effective tonight. Randy White playing hurt again as he's done so often. There's Tom Rafferty, Rafferty the right there, who's had some good work in the middle tonight, but mostly on pass protection. The Cowboys have not been eking out any rushing yardage at all against New York, and with the strength of the Giants, you're starting to get the impression that if Dallas is going to win this ball game, they're going to have to do it with a big play or some turnovers. Rushing the football down New York's throat isn't going to happen. From the 25-yard line, Sims is going to put it up. And he winds up running it out through the 30-yard line. You know, earlier we talked about combined yardage, and we, we figured we would uh, take a look at career combined yards, rushing, passing, receiving. Frank is up there among the leaders at 98.70. And uh, yours truly would be second. And then, of course, there was uh, the one-time tackle for the Cardinals, Dan Deardorff, who snapped the ball over Neil Lomax's head. He had 12 yards returning fumbles in his career and then got charged with a minus 13. Steve Hurt, you're a dead man. You set me up today. <laughs> this is Adam out to the 35-yard uh, line. Steve, after some uh, assiduous research, was oh. able to come up with that. So we've got a flag down on the field. You talk about being drawn into an innocent conversation. <laughs> Yep, well, Wyatt makes the call, and it's going to push the Giants back. And, and there he is, folks, minus one. What did you do again? Yardage. I was a center and a shotgun snap. And if it goes over the quarterback's shoulder, they credit the center with having caused the fumble. And I got, I got the loss of yardage. I, I thought Lomax was at least nine or ten feet tall. Frank, <laughs> not only that, but on the, but Dallas or Washington recovered, and on the next play, Seisman threw a touchdown. Oh, come pass. on. Give me a break. He did. You? Well, it was after lunch. Well, what do you want to get on? Good friends. It's always nice to have good friends. <laughs> Second and 17. And it's caught by Manuel near the first down marker at the 34-yard line. You know, people didn't get a chance to know Manuel last year because he was hurt after the fourth game, I believe, and missed the entire season. The year before that, he had led the Giants in receiving, but he's a spectacular receiver. He's not too big, 5'11", 186, and we know he has the speed. We saw him catch the bomb a while ago, but what he really does better than any Giant particularly, and better than most wide receivers in the league, he knows how to work his own. He knows how to work man for man. He reads it so quickly, and he is rapidly developing into one of the best we've got around. Giants now third down in inches, and they bring Lee Luson into the game and pair him with Adams. They give it to Adams, and he's got that first down as he's pushed back by Lockhart, but not after he takes it out to the 37-yard line with 4.05 to play in the third quarter. Kevin Brooks still down on the ground for Dallas, and he's attempting to get up. Finally makes it back to the huddle, number 99, Kevin Brooks out of... Michigan, who Frank has had to fight a lot of injury problems here in Dallas. And he's yeah, he he's receiving a long injury. distance call right now. Oh, the bells are going off. <laughs> Collect first and 10 from the 38. Joe Morris back in the game, stays into block. And it's tipped and incomplete in and out of Manuel's hands. And Joe Morris did another job. He did his job. He usually is not in there in this kind of a situation. They'll take him out. And that time, Morris made another block. That's about the third tonight that has saved Phil Sims from major sacks. 
It's his job to look at Eugene Lockhart, the middle linebacker, all the way. Lockhart comes in clean. And Joe Morris, who was to the right of Phil Sims, had to move out of his way, cut back to the left, make contact with number 56 Lockhart, and knock him out of the play. Third time tonight. Dog down for the Cowboys once again. On second and ten, Sims to the safety valve, Adams, and he is tripped up by Mike Hegman. Hegman all over the joint tonight. Interesting how a veteran ball player reacts to adversity. And here in Dallas, where the fans are down on the players, the coaches have been tough on them. If a franchise is going to go into a swoon, it's the veteran ball players who always end up either at another club or out on the street. And interesting how the Cowboy veterans are responding tonight. These guys are playing darn good football. Third and long, the Giants have Manuel back out on the rookie, Ron Francis, to Phil Sims left. Third and ten. Sims is going to go right, though, for Baker and incomplete. Bates and Walls were both there. Everson Walls broke it up. He got a hand on it. And a great crowd reaction. Watch Everson come from behind in all sorts of contact. Whoa, he puts both hands on the back of Stephen Baker to get around to the front and gets away without the call. That, that easily could have been an interference call. He had one earlier in the end zone. So the Cowboys able to stop the Giants and Lance Edwards to boot it away. Good deep kick. Edwards from the 15-yard line. It's tackled at the 18 with 2.28. And Robbie Jones in on the tackle again. 47-yard boot and a three-yard run back with 2.28 to play in the third period. Cowboys seem to think they were going to get their act together after what happened last week in Philadelphia and uh, very celebrated what happened. I talked about it in our open. This is what happened. A minute 18 left to go in the game and the Eagles clearly running out the clock. Tom Landry says, well, 30 to 20, a 10 point loss and they're being gracious about it. Not the case. Third down under 10 <laughs> seconds and Randall Cunningham comes back and launches one to the end zone and there's the interference call against Francis. And boy, this is just, I'm sorry, there's no other way to describe this. This is just taking your nose and rubbing it in it. Penalty against the Giants when they back up will explain what happened a couple of weeks prior to last week's Philadelphia game. The Eagles were in town and the Cowboys had several replacement players out of the lineup and they brought whether they had a big lead in halftime and they brought in Tony Dorsett and Danny White and that got Buddy Ryan hot. And he said at the time, you're going to have to come play me in Philadelphia. Meanwhile, the Giants took again because Pepper Johnson was downfield too wow. early. And this is a real beauty. Backs Edwards up to the three-yard line. And he takes it to the 11. So the Cowboys could have declined the penalty but elected to take it. And they wind up in worse <laughs> shape at the 11. And there's a good case of the return man not knowing where he is on the field because he's back there all by himself. And that was a 64-yard punt. Well, more than that, he had some altitude on it. Mm. Vandetta really got it back in the groove last week against the Cardinals. He averaged over 45 yards a punt, and he just flat nailed that one. So the Cowboys backed up to their 11 with number 11 White at the helm. And shooting it out for Banks. And Banks is ridden down at the 19-yard line after a gain of close to eight. Stopped by Terry Kennard. Where the Cowboys have been successful tonight offensively is several times they've taken the ball in their own end of the field, inside their own 20. And while they haven't converted them into points, more often than not, they've gotten out to the 40 or even up to midfield before they've had to punt the football away. Really an emotional turnaround for a team. If they get backed up inside their 20, only get three downs, have to punt it away. When they're three points down, they need some first downs, if not some points. Second and two. And White goes to the air to try to get the first down and does as Newsom makes the catch and he's taken out of bounds at the 24-yard line. I'll tell you, that will tell you something. They have decided they're not going to run too well against the Giants and they have not all night long. On second and short yardage, they still put it up in the air. And Carl Banks again in on the stop, but they do get the first down. And Lawrence Taylor gets 
most of the ink, Dan, but this is a great one. A lot of the coaches in the league tell you if I had to make the choice between Carl Banks and Lawrence Taylor, it might be a split decision. It certainly would not be a unanimous vote. Carl Banks, his all-around skills are just extraordinary, and to think that those two guys are on the outside is mind-boggling. On the first down, Herschel Walker fights his way out to the 30-yard line for a gain of six. Speaking of extraordinary. <laughs> I guess you could make the same point about he and Dorsett being on the same team. Well, Herschel's day is going to come, and it's going to come pretty soon because uh, Tony Dorsett is the second oldest running back in the league at 33. What's to do it at 33? And more than that, he had arthroscopic surgery on both knees during the offseason. He's healthy. The knees are fine. But at 33, you just don't make that cut like you used to make it. You don't accelerate like... Tony used to do it. He just can't do it anymore. The only older running back is the Giants' Galbraith. There's a penalty flag thrown as Herschel Walker. It could have. It could be a delay. The clock was down to zero. It is offense. So the Cowboys, who had a second down and five, can't get the playoff before the clock runs out. Quick look at Tom Lambie talking to Paul Hackett and Jim Erkenbach there upstairs. There's the 1985 rushing plays between Dorsett. You see, he was the main man last year. The gap between he and Herschel Walker narrows to only 30 plus carries, and it's tough to have two men of that talent in the same backfield. And all the great backs will tell you that I'd rather carry it 30 times a game than 20 times a game, and it's there's not room for both. On second and ten from the 25 yard line, the pass is broken up. Intended for Rod Barksdale and Mark Collins was covering on the play and it was Lawrence Taylor putting the pressure on There are the great backs Eric Dickerson. He just Carries it over 60% Joe Morris. He likes to run at one time It was Bill Parcells didn't think that he could carry it over 20 times and the more you gave it to him the better He was Kurt Warner. He's a tremendous workhorse and you look at Tony Dorsett and Herschel Walker though It is Herschel Walker the man who can carry it those 20 25 30 times Tony Dorsett Never a back that at 185 pounds that could carry it that many times. Third down and nine at the 25-yard line. And again, we've got a whistle blowing the play dead. Here's Wyatt. Well start, number 66. And that would be Kevin Gogan. Well, we saw Dickerson's name up there. We haven't touched on that much tonight. Eric uh, traded Indianapolis. Among other things that happened this week, Eric traded his new digs at Malibu by the Sea for a city that is the largest American city not on a navigable waterway, Indianapolis. He could buy a river for the amount of money he got. <laughs> <laughs> but leave, in the king size pool. <laughs> but leave his surfboard at home. Third down and 15. The Rams came up with the entire draft for next year. Yeah. <laughs> White going deep Edwards, and no flag and the crowd wants a flag Perry Williams with the coverage that might be a little reflective of that damaged wrist from a year ago for Danny White that ball had nothing on it just hung up there like a, a wounded bird and Edwards had just a little bit of a step Danny just couldn't get it there. That was a beautiful play by Perry Williams. Initially, when you first saw the play, it looked like he had made contact mm -hmm. with Kelvin Edwards, but no, the hand was free. If anything, he hooked him in the face mask a little bit. It's yet. And look at this. Jackson has a ghost through his hands and still has time to get into what he's a giant that set up a return. So he makes a little something out of nothing. And a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Well, you'll have illegal men downfield because they left well before the kick, not knowing what had happened with Saxon back behind. Had an immediately saying, we don't want it. Ineligible number 40 downfield declined first down. 14-yard punt. Here's a look at it. Let's look at the snap. Not a bad snap from Steve Diossi. It's right at eye level, and that snap from Diossi should have been handled by Saxon, who still has trouble getting the handle on it, and the Giants, who were set up in a return, had no 
no one pressuring the kicker whatsoever. Boy, talk about a wasted opportunity for the Giants. Would not be surprised to see Bill Parcells wanting to go quickly for a big score. Good, good idea, but you get a quick turnover deep in territory. Try to get it all. From the 34-yard line, a sweep from Morris who cuts it back upfield and takes it down to the 33-yard line. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. So the Giants are the only scoring in period three, lead by three, and we'll be back after this word about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from your local state. So we start the fourth quarter. Texas Stadium in Irving. Cowboys led at the half, but the Giants scored in the third period to take the lead. And as we start the fourth quarter, it's New York 17, Dallas 14. And the Giants have the football with the Dallas 33-yard line, second down, nine. And they're going to whom, Frank? I would say Manuel. It's a blitz situation for the Cowboys. You should get man on man. Manuel is lined up in front of the rookie, Ron Francis, bottom of your screen. To the left. Manuel going deep, and he's going for Manuel, who has him beat, and touchdown. Great ball. I get an assist. <laughs> you get the setup. <laughs> Factors in, though. Landry loves to come with the blitz. You'll get man for man when you get that, and Manuel is not going to be covered by Ron Francis, at least in this decade, when you get him one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Super little receiver. Let's take a look at him. First, the protection. Sprints away from Francis. He wasn't even close. And trying to get back and help out will be Michael Downs. Too late with too little. As we look at the extra point, it's funny how Francis, a rookie defensive back, isn't playing the deep route. Normally, rookie corners are guilty of giving way too much ground, if anything. You know, they give all that cushion underneath, and yet here you have Francis, who's already been beaten long for a touchdown, gets it again, still playing the short route. I can't figure it. Very high on him. He was uh, at the Southwest Conference out of Baylor, where they are very well coached over there. We look at it again, and he did not make any mistakes at all in preseason. It's one of the rare times Landy would ever start a rookie, but twice now we have seen Manuel just sprint right by him. There's no way they were not going to come back to it, particularly on second and long, because they were anticipating the blitz. They got that. They picked it up. Single coverage, an easy touchdown for the Giants. There he is, and then think about it with that soft cast and all four touchdown receptions in the last two games. And you think about Lionel Manuel and his talents, you really even have to admire the New York Giants for what they did down the stretch last year because they did it without this guy who was hurt uh, in the New Orleans game and last October with a knee and really wasn't any help to the Giants at all until playoff time came around. So losing their number one receiver like that is still doing what they did getting to the Super Bowl. Quite a test with how strong that giant team is. Kickoff taken by Edwards at the one-yard line. Nice little hurdle. And out to the 30-yard line. And from there, will Dallas begin as we take a look at the numbers through the first 45 minutes. It's beginning to change. I think, Dan, we mentioned a while ago when we were away and Al that I think just the sheer strength now the Giants is beginning to tell. They're really beating up on them off defensively. They've taken the run game totally away from them. Both teams, 56 yards and 25 yards. That's a that's an extremely low total for both of these clubs. And if you can take the running game away from a team with Herschel Walker yeah. and Tony Dorsett, you can take it away from anybody. Good point. From the 30-yard line, Danny White and Cosby. First down out to the 45. They go to the tight end, and Kenny Hill makes the tackle. And the plays the Cowboys are making really belong to Danny White. Again, he was harassed under pressure. Calm, cool, and was able to get the ball at the last second to Cosby. Again, I'll go back to it. I mean, he followed the legend down here, and he's done some amazing things. He came in in 1980, took him twice to NFC Championship games, and it was never quite enough, because when you follow Roger Staubach, well, you just can't do enough. From the 46-yard line, and it's Dorsett with a flag down, a marker down. Mr. Intensity, Ernie Stott, the old Hall of Fame Pittsburgh Steeler. He's trying to counsel his wounded cornerback, Ron Francis. You know, that can really destroy a back for at least for a while, and 
Ernie, I'm sure, is trying to say, look, you know, it's all over now. It's history. Let's just go from here. Penalty is against the Cowboys. Let's take a look at George Martin, number 75, sliding to the inside. George, a 13-year guy who's won all sorts of community awards, is the New York Giants representative for the Travelers NFL Man of the Year. First and 15 after the procedure call, and it's Cosby who takes the ball over the 50 and is run out of bounds at about the 47 of the Giants. Talking about George Martin, 13 years he's been playing this game. He also was the winner of the Wizard White Award presented by the Players Association last spring. That again, like the Travelers Man of the Year Award for community effort in, uh, at Super Bowl 22, where we are going to be able to announce the Travelers Man Year of the Award. Those six TDs that he scored, I think I saw three of them <laughs> up close and personal. <laughs> <laughs> and he scored another one yeah. when he lined up as a tight end one time. He has seven in his career. And I believe that was against the Cowboys in New York. Second and three, Danny White to Cosby again. And a first down at the 27-yard line. So three times they have gone to Cosby, who has scored a touchdown already tonight. In the last two times, the identical pattern. Just breaking it off underneath. Ordinarily, the Giants will pick up Cosby, and they'll cover him for the man-for-man. -man. But from this zone, they're almost trying to cover him with linebackers, and that won't get it done. You can see Pepper Johnson coming into the shot, and Kenny Hill getting back there very late. Those patterns, a lot of them crossing patterns by the tight end, take a lot of time. Two things are happening. Danny White is getting some good protection up front, but he's also waiting until the last minute taking a shot just about every time. From the 27-yard line, Walker. Stopped by Hill at the 16, and so Dallas mounts a drive at a time when they need to move into the end zone. They're down by 10. That time, Pepper Johnson floats out from the inside. Watch him come across underneath. He tries to make a play on the ball instead of the man. Pepper should have gone back and made the play on Herschel Walker instead of trying to get up front on the ball. But he doesn't get either one. And the Cowboys pick up another first down inside the 20, down to almost the 15-yard line. And when they're down by 10, this is a drive they sorely needed. Thanks to the left, Renfro to the right. And they give it to Dorsett, and still nothing cooking. He is ankle tackled by Carl Banks. And you hear the booze for yep. Tony Dorsett. Goes back to his crossing the picket line because of his contracts and economics, the things he said prior to that. And might have something to do with that as well. Very confused young man, though. You can't quite understand it. Minus one yard. That's. Uh, that's astonishing. I don't know that that's ever happened to Tony before, and I think you saw a good look yeah. of him looking up to the stands as they applauded well, you, when he you, left the field. You can relate to that stat, Dan. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Light the throw. And thanks, it was behind him. He had slipped down. Harry Carson covering on the play, and it will set up third down. Cowboys need seven out of this one. They do not. But then I want the three out of it. Here's Tom Landry. And he talks high overhead to Paul Hackett, the offensive coordinator, who's there with Jim Birkenbach, who came over from New Orleans this past year to help out on the offense. Landry will make the decision. He'll get the input from Hackett, the former 49er coach, who arrived here with the Cowboys a year ago. But Landry will make the call. And this is his choice for third and 12. Shotgun. And he lost it and incomplete with a flag because Andy Hedden didn't even turn around. With Timmy Newsom down there, Andy Hedden was looking right into Newsom's eyes and never looked back at the ball. You have to play the football. I don't think Hedden knew the ball was coming. That was well played by Newsom. He came out of there so cool as the ball was coming towards him. He did not put his hands up. He did not act excited. He did not act like an eligible receiver. And Hedden did not play the ball because he didn't think it was going to be there. I don't think they're going to get the call. No penalty, no penalty. Oh, boy. I don't think he made the contact. Well, I think this might warrant a look. Let's take a look at it. This action will be at the top of your screen. 
Jimmy Newsom flares out. Now he makes his turn upfield. The ball's in the air. Now hit. Looking at Newsom. Looking at Newsom. Newsom never even saw the football. And I didn't see any contact there. Neither one of them. There was a little pressing right there, but that's allowable. Well, Newsom never even made a play for the never football. Never saw the football, and Danny White almost caught it for him. I wonder if that ball got up in the light somehow, and he never saw it because he didn't make a play until it was moving by him at waist level. Dallas now to try the field goal. Ruzak, 35-yard attempt. Spotted at the 25-yard line, and he boots it through, and that puts them back within seven. With 11.58 to play in the fourth period, it's now 24-17. I'd like a further explanation of why that flag went. And it comes out of the pocket right there. And it does not seem to be any question, but it's disallowed. Somebody, perhaps with a better angle, overruling that call. Back in a moment. And uh, another look down from the Goodyear Blimp America into Texas Stadium. In Irving, Texas, beautiful night, warm night, good ball game, 24-17. Giants on top by a touchdown with Ruzek to kick off for college football today. And uh, another look down from the Goodyear Blimp, America, into Texas Stadium. In Irving, Texas, beautiful night, warm night, good ball game, 24-17. Giants on top by a touchdown with Ruzek to kick off for the Cowboys. A whole bunch of the line for the Giants at one and five. As far as that flag, we'll give you an explanation after this play as it's been passed along to us. Lee Ruzan at the one. A flag is thrown, and Ruzan goes down at the 29-yard line. Fred Wyant's call. Number 44, illegal block in the back. 10 yards, push down. That would be Maurice Carson. The preliminary word from down on the field on the flag that was thrown on the play of the end zone was that the official... Okay, late results have just come in. <laughs> The flag was thrown by the official on the spot, who's Stan Kemp. And then after conferring with the field judge, Don Orr, he decided that he would pick up the flag and rule himself no penalty. I like that. I like it very much as well. First down, New York from the 15-yard line. Joe Morris, Barry. Randy White in on the tackle. White in his 13th year. It's a... It's an old defensive line. White in his 13th year. Jones in his 13th year. And then they're trying to move Brooks in. The, the third-year man out of Michigan. Another one they like out to is Danny Noonan, their rookie first-round draft pick out of Nebraska. Gradual changing of the guard here in Dallas. And John, John Dutton, who's 36. A backup. Second and nine. Tim and it's Catch is made by Manuel out of the 27-yard line. What a spectacular night Manuel's had. That time they put him on one of the best man-for-man -man defensive backs in the league, Everson Walls. Slides up. you got to respect the speed. He's already showed you he can beat Chateek. Walls is so much closer than Ron Francis has been all night. But nevertheless, as he comes back to the ball, Tim's is right on target. They've timed it out beautifully, and he has the first down. Giants first and 10 at the 27, 10 35 remaining in the fourth. Giants ahead by seven. Adams in motion. Morris. And he's met by, among others, that's Noonan, number 73, right there. Check out the guns on this guy. Guns are uh, a football player's expression for arms. Check out the biceps on Danny Noonan, who coming out of Nebraska, already had an excess of 500 pounds on the bench press. You know, he started Nebraska at <laughs> 220 pounds, got into weight, and this is the result of that. It's like looking down at a fire hydrant when you're in your stance. 
on second and nine. Tip and intercepted and run back inside the 15 by Jeff Coates for the touchdown. Jim Jeff Coates. Two tall tipped it and Jeff Coates with the interception and the score. Too tall has tipped many passes, none perhaps, but not as much as this one at this point. The best way plan. Giants were being so careful with it. They ran a double line stunt up front. And too tall Jones, who I'll guarantee you has more batted passes than any defensive lineman in the history of the game. With 85, didn't he tip one in the air? And Jeff Coat took it in for right. a touchdown to beat them in the Meadowlands. Roger Ruzak is trying to tie the game. See Pelour to hold. And it's perfect. Take a look at Too Tall Jones, who's going to crash. He's going to come from the right of your screen inside. Watch him get the ball. Jeff Coates blocked at the line of scrimmage, and it just served up right to him. And from there, he beats Phil Sims into the end zone. Dallas needed a big play. They got it from Ed Jones and Jim Jeff Coates. Jeff Coates, the touchdown maker, set up by Too Tall Jones. Jones has knocked down 61 passes in the last seven years, and he had 16 in 1984, won a game. Can't blame that on me. That was the year after I retired. So. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the seven-yard line, this is Adams, who comes back to the 23. Cowboys fired up, crowd fired up, as the Cowboys have erased a 10-point deficit. You want to see what Phil Sims saw? That's called an ET, the end crashes to the inside. Too tall gets inside William Roberts. The ball just batted up into the air perfectly for Jim Jeffcoat and Bill Sims tries. But Jim has just got a clear sail into the end zone. And actually, Jeffcoat was completely blocked on the play, and Ed Jones made that happen. Former number one draft pick out of Arizona State out. Couldn't let that slide by. Another Sun Devil. Morris. And he's wrapped up for a five-yard loss. Jeff Rohrer. This crowd has been on their feet. They were on their feet when we were away. And they remain on their feet. They came out, many of them, I think, just to boo the Dallas Cowboys. And that's how quickly they turn around. And those applause were for Jeff Rohrer, too. Yeah. <laughs> He ought to, I hope someone quartered that one for him. I doubt he uh, thought that could happen this evening. Second down, 15. Giants turnovers. Galbraith fumble. And the interception both resulting in touchdown. Second and 15. Penalty flag is down. I think the clock had run out. It did. Too much time. Oh, and the crowd will take credit for that, too. This will be a delay of game against the Giants. So there's no play. There's no penalty to accept or decline. Just a five-yard march off. 8.53 to play. And you're digging yourself deeper and deeper into your own territory. You can't get too risky down here with second and long yardage. You're going to probably get the blitz from the Cowboys down here. As you see Jim Jeffco. Both of those going against Sims, both return for touchdowns, and the one in 85, the difference in the win and the loss. He likes, the, winning. He likes to hit against him. Sims, under pressure, throws, oh. and it's caught out at the 18 by Lee Rousson. The Cowboys are saying no. But it is ruled a completion. Jeff Coat that time came in and really leveled Sims. I think we call that adding insult to injury. He came all the way across the field. Let's spotlight Jim Jeffcoat working against Brad Benson. He takes the long way there. Sims had rolled out, but that's close, guys. That's close to that one-step rule and then making contact with the helmet. He let up just a little bit. If he had followed him into the turf, Sims could have been hurt. And I'm sure he would have drawn the flag if he would have followed him into the ground. Third and 
14 now. Sims out of the shotgun. The clock is down to three. Well, Brad Benson came off uh -huh. the line of scrimmage. False start. And the crowd playing a part in this penalty, a very big point. Well, you know what happened? Phil Sims was under center and decided to go back into the shotgun. And when he pulled out from under center, Brad Benson saw him moving, and he dropped back thinking the ball had been snapped. Let's see if we can get a look at this one. See, Sims under center. He's going to go back into shotgun, and Benson, because of the crowd noise, thought the ball had been snapped. He would have had to call that in the huddle. That's just a middle error. Third he did it again. He third, did some moves again. Third and 18. The play is waved off. The play is a dead play. Right. Waved off. That means nothing what just happened there. Waved off. The Giants have already been penalized 11 times for 90 yards. And Phil is hot. He can't believe this is happening, but Brad just can't hear the call. Number 60 backs off the line. The flags fly right there. Again, you're an offensive tackle. When you can't hear the call, what do you do? You sit there. You have to wait for the movement of the defender across from you. You really have to look at the ball out of the corner of your eye because you cannot hear the quarterback call the signal. It's even worse than the shotgun. That time Phil was under center, and it still happened. And it puts a lot of pressure on Sean Landetta, who's kicked well tonight. Uh, <laughs> kicking, but it's third down. Yeah, it is. This is very interesting. It's third here. down. What is what is Parcell saying here? Is he saying we we can't operate? No, those are false starts. Those plays never occurred. It's still third down. Exactly. I'm wondering uh, if they're they, getting it straightened out now. Sims had come off the field. Yeah, here goes the Giants and their offensive unit back up. In the motion, we play the down. Yeah, that's that down never counts. Wouldn't that have been wild had they punted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it uh, might be the best thing they can do. A couple of more procedure penalties, and uh, Landen will be backed up to the end line. Can you imagine what's going on up here in the booth with Ron Earhart up here with screaming at Parcells on the phone? Meanwhile, Adams just comes into the game. They're still confused. Adams becomes the 11th guy. Well, they haven't even started the 30-second clock yet. Now, now Fred Wyatt's got to take control here. This, the old, uh, the old horse has run out of the barn here. I mean, he's lost this one. The crowd, the crowd has really made a difference. The 30-second clock had never even started that time. Yeah. And, and to think we still have about seven or 8,000 empty seats and you still have this noise. It's a settle down, guys. Let's get it together. Well, I think the Dallas fans are saying, how many chances are we going to give these guys to run a play? If they want to punt on third down, let them punt. <laughs> Let's see if we can at least get the 30-second clock started. 7.19 to play. It's still not moving. Now it starts. Now they say start it. Third and 23. Sims is sacked at the two. They've been better off punting. They will. Now. And they will not be able to even punt from a spread formation now. The dramatic turnaround. The deflection by Jones. The interception by Jeffcoat. Change the whole complexion of this game. Landetta now. He can only be 12 yards behind the snap. His last kick was 64 yards. If I had to kick out of an end zone, here's my guy. Oh, and yeah. he does. And it's a, a pretty good kick. And a fair catch is made at the 48-yard line by Edwards. And so White and the Cowboys coming back. With 6.42 to go in the fourth, tied 24-24. Cowboys, having already erased a 10-point deficit, now have the football at the New York 47-yard line, first and 10. And Phil Sims, who had some sparkling stats not long ago, having a real tough fourth period. 
still those numbers are pretty good. And it's really tough to say that getting sacked on the two yard line and having too tall bat a pass for a touchdown is hardly Phil Sims' fault. It's, uh, hard for me to say he did anything wrong on those plays. Cowboys now send Edwards and Banks to the left and Walker as a receiver to the right. And it's uh, Timmy Newsom carrying the football down to the 43 yard line. Or Dorsett, rather. Tony Dorsett carrying for a gain of about four to the 43. It'll make it second down and six. There's Carl Banks working the tight end, Thornton Chandler, and just, again, not giving an inch from the line of scrimmage, standing his man straight up, and then reacting inside or outside to make the tackle. On second and six. Walker inside the 30, and Herschel with the 23-yard line. Herschel Walker. That little slant against the zone, Danny White and Walker are reading it dead solid perfect. And right behind the linebacker, Banks, and he's wide open for just that moment that Danny White has been there three different times tonight. And one of these times, Walker's going to split it. And he'll be in the end zone before you can bat an eye. Here he goes into the wide receiver position again, this time split left. He's left, Edwards and Banks to the right, to our set, the sole running back. Gives it to Tony, and he's wrapped up right there. Leonard Marshall, number 70, stops him for no game. And the clock ticking down. We're down to 5:17, which is fine with the Cowboys. I think they'd just as soon use up as much time as they possibly could before they either score a touchdown or attempt a field goal. They they just like to crank another two or three minutes off this clock before they have to do anything. They're well within field goal range, and they've got a hot kicker. Roger Ruzik is seven of eight. Tony in the plus territory. Second and ten. For Walker, batted away. Mark Collins does it again on an underthrown pass, and it's the second time he's batted the pass away. Frank. Ball had it been led would have been six points as you can see Danny under threw that one a couple of But the only thing Danny has done wrong tonight is under throw a couple of deep receivers and again, he's Probably still affected a little bit from a severely Shattered wrist of a year ago up to throw that long one. And that is six points if it's thrown another couple of yards downfield Herschel Walker had the proper position on Collins, but again under throw. Third and ten from the shotgun. White pressure and sack, and that may take Ooh. them out of field goal range. That's a big sack by Leonard Marshall. A real big one. Well, it won't take them away from it, but it's sure going to stretch yep. it out. Makes it harder. They can still attempt one, but it's uh, about another seven yards. Boy, that is a difficult sack for Danny to take. Leonard at the top of the screen gets the pull on two and a. A good example of what happens when a defensive end gets his hands on your jersey. And boy, this puts Dallas into long range field goal. 49 yard attempt from the 39 yard line. To lure to hold. Rafferty snaps. And the kick is good. Just good. Oh. Maybe by a yard. Mm. He had one of 50 last week. And that is about as far as he is going to kick it. A lot of time left. 4-11. Cowboys, I'm sure, would have liked to have run off more time. Right through the middle and just over the crossbar. That baby wasn't good by more than a couple of feet. The Cowboys had a field goal block last week in Philadelphia that helped turn the game, but this time the body English was good. Ruzek, plenty to spare. <laughs> I was nothing. I knew I had it. <laughs> I nailed it, didn't I? Yeah. If, if Marshall can add another yard to that sack, this game is still tied. Instead, the Cowboys lead 27-24. That's how close. Right. That Giants offensive unit is going to be facing this crowd once again. 
which totally had them discombobulated on their last series. This is where if you're a coach and what Bill Parcells is thinking right now, special teams, give me a good return. Give me some decent field position, a little momentum, get it up to the 30 or the 35. This is where all those hours spent on special teams practice might pay off. Mushan is a four. Flag. Fumble. And remember, a penalty marker is down. But you'd have to think that that flag is going to end up being against the Giants. You got a marker, a scuffle, and no call yet on a recovery. Uh, you don't even know if the official's in there. Yeah. Outside of that, not much is going on here. <laughs> Three little altercations, no signal yet. You notice most of the white jerseys are the hyperactive ones. Well, for the moment, they've got a Dallas recovery, but now let's see about the penalty. Dallas comes up with the ball. It's Ron Burton at the bottom of the pile. There he is. Illegal block in the back. Number 57 declined. First down. No sweeter music could be heard by this crowd. Talk about destructing in just the last few minutes. The offensive unit. In the last series, a fumble here by Rusan. The wheels have just come off. Put that away. You don't swing it around like that. And a definite hit on the part of Ron Francis, the rookie from Baylor. Yeah, he came in and went for the football all the way. That was a great look of Francis coming in from behind with really no intention of making the tackle, just slapping at Rusan's right arm and springing loose the football. And really, Ruzek was in there too. A little redemption for those two touchdown <laughs> passes he gave up. Well, you got that straight. From the 29, they can work on the clock now. And they let Dorsett try to take a few ticks off it. Did you see Dorsett, though? Both hands covering that football. He gains about three, 343. Each team has all of its timeouts remaining. Cowboys ahead 27-24. Dorsett, you go back to 1977, his debut, his first game ever in the NFL 10 years ago to go through a night like tonight. I don't think he's going to care very much if they win the ball game. Second and six. And White's going to throw it. And it's caught by Thornton Chandler, and he's out of bounds. It appears to be a, a yard shy of a first down at the 20, and he steps out of bounds, and that helps the Giants. It stops the clock at 3.09. Chandler, just a second-year player out of Alabama. You have to applaud his effort of going for the first down, but as Al alluded to, staying in bounds right now, critical for the Cowboys, burning off as much clock as they can. This is a, a real big play for the Giants here. If Dallas gets the first down, they can take it all the way down to the two-minute warning and then some. There are no passive observers on the Giants' sideline. Two tight ends, third and one. They let Herschel Ooh. do it, and he can't do anything, and Lawrence Taylor is right there. Big, big play. And the Giants calling for a timeout. Bill Parcells going crazy trying to get somebody to call one. Ooh, not happy. You know, it's funny, Landry was calling for a timeout on the last play as well. Here it is on tape. Huh. He, he knew what he had in there wasn't right, whether he got it by the phone or not. Ooh, whatever play he called, he did not have the people for it. And it was obviously reflected in what happened. Well, the difference between the two coaches there, Landry was trying to call it before they ran the play. Right. Bill Parcells was calling a timeout after the play because of the result. He knows they're going to kick a field goal, and he just wants to save as much time as he can with 2.59. It's fourth down and three. So Ruzek comes back in to try to make it a six-point lead. Hasn't missed. He's made him from 35 and from 49, both here in the fourth quarter. 
For those of you keeping score at home, Mark, the Giants now with two timeouts remaining. The Dale get to utilize in a drive. Factor in the two-minute warning, and the Giants, after this attempted field goal, will have three stoppages of the clock at their disposal. And in the Giants game, which they lost 16 to 14, they started at their own two-yard line, trailing 16 to 14, and they moved down to within field goal range. That was when Allegra missed them 46 yards. And they can move it quickly. This is a 40-yard attempt, and in that game, it was Ruzek who kicked three field goals. Dallas with a touchdown, and they won a 16-14. Pelour holds. This kick is long enough, and very true as well. So Dallas leads by six with 2.54 to play in the fourth period. It's 30-24. to 24. And the Giants will get the ball back with two timeouts remaining. And a reminder coming up this weekend, uh, Saturday, college football. Check your local listing for the game in your area. The Stanford Cardinal and the Trojans of USC, or the Wolverines of Michigan and the Gophers of Minnesota. And our coverage begins at 3 Eastern time, a week from tonight, 9 Eastern time, Monday Night Football, the Seattle Seahawks going into the Meadowlands to take on the New York Jets. How did Stanford get only one bird? One Cardinal. The Stanford Cardinal. Well, because it's the color, it's not the bird, it's the color Cardinal. Were they afraid of offending the bird? And what was the well, they changed it from Indians because they were they were they didn't like that nickname, they were afraid that was offensive. You have a multitude of Wolverines. We do have a multitude of good. Good luck trying to find one in the state of Michigan. <laughs> they are not indigenous to the area. They're fierce little buggers, aren't they? They are. Uh, they're nasty little creatures. Mr. Parcells is going to be a nasty mm -hmm. large creature. Yeah. Speaking of fierce, the Ooh. Giants uh, charter home with a loss. And. Roussan and Adams are back to receive with Ruzek to kick off for the Cowboys. Roussan from the goal line. Back out to the 20. Stopped by Vince Albritton. 2.45 to play. And the Giants' offensive unit is going to have to show a lot more poise than they did on their last series. With the two illegal movements at the line of scrimmage, the sack, and now here comes the crowd. What do they call that guy? Something Ray? Whistling Ray. Whist you love him, don't you, Dan? Oh, yeah, I really enjoyed him behind the bench with his little whistle. Shotgun. First and ten, and Sims has it tipped up in the air, intercepted by White at the 22. Unbelievable. Jones, Ed Jones tipped it again. Sims is hurt. Sims is hurt because I think he got hit by Jeff Coat, and he is clutching his left knee. Jim Jeff Coat went right over the top of Brad Benson. not sure if he's the guy that got Phil Sims, but this is as bad a news on one play as the Giants could ever get. Yep. This is the ultimate nightmare. You probably lost the game. You might have blown the playoffs or any chance thereof, and now you're worried about your quarterback. Jeff Coach, 77 at the bottom against Benson. Look at him just throw Benson into the air. Oh, you can see this coming. I don't want to see. Oh. And Phil Sims went down. He has been around this game a long time, nine-year veteran. And I'm sure he told the medical staff when they came out of the field exactly what happened. He Giant, knows what kind of injury he has. Giant players are all over the field. Folks, don't look at this if you don't want to see it. Feel free to blink your eyes or look away. But it's a tough one to watch. I'm glad we missed it. That's... That's as sickening a feeling as a football player can undergo. Giant players all around the field down on their knees and sitting on their helmets, somehow trying to will Phil Sims into getting up and walking off this field.
sure he can't believe it. Mark and only the rest of the Jazz, they had this game pretty much in control. Checking the looseness of the knee before they will even let him try to get up. The left knee. Here, Roddy Barnes is there. Dr. Alan Levy in the Giants position. For the Giants, of course, it's it's only Rutledge to back up Sims. Hostetler was hurt. He's not even on the active list right now. And well, that's that's an encouraging sight anyway. At least Sims is able to, to rise and put a little bit of weight on it. Oh, that's that's real good. That's that's, great. that's fabulous. That's fabulous. Oh, that. Some classy, uh, some classy applause here by the Cowboy fans, too, who give Phil Sims a hand. That's, that, that's great that he's able to put, look at him bend it on his own, yeah. slide up. Hey, this, this is, if you're a Giants fan, that's the best thing you've seen in a while. Granted, the play that just happened is terrible news, and who knows what's going to happen when the playoffs get around here, but if you're a Giants fan, that's great news. So Jeff Rutledge, the sparingly used one, will have to come in when the Giants get the ball back, but that may be for a while because Dallas has it at the 21. Sims, shoulder in 80, knee in 82, broken thumb in 83. shot by Jim Jeffcoat. Not at all, but you can see the weight totally planted on the left foot when he was hit. Where's that possible position he yeah. could be in. He's just trying to fight his way to the quarterback. I'll guarantee you, knowing Jeffcoat, he'll be the first guy up the tunnel to try to find out how Phil Sims is doing. Dallas has it at the 21-yard line, and Herschel Walker falls out, losing <laughs> the football at the 19-yard line. Now look at Sims, and let's get the result of the fumble. The Giants who recover. The Giants get it back. Of all things, Dallas with a chance to almost run the whole clock out. A fumble and Jim Bird recovers. I mean, Rutledge will have a chance, and Rutledge has only thrown four regular season passes in the last three years. Hasn't played much at all since 1983, one of those years in which Phil Sims went down. Came from the Rams. But he did play during strike ball this year. So he has thrown the football. So he is somewhat fresh at the 19-yard line out of the shotgun. Rutledge throwing to Galbraith, who makes the catch at the 22-yard line, and he stays in bounds, and the clock is ticking down with 2.15. That, by the way, was Randy White's first career interception in his 13th season. Rutledge wants to get a playoff before the two-minute warning stops, and then he does. On second and six, he throws for Bavaro, and Bavaro has the first down, takes it out to the 36-yard line, and your two-minute warning comes at 158. The Giants have two timeouts remaining. They have their second-string quarterback in the game, and their playoff hope hanging in the balance. Your other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is strictly prohibited. And you can't do it either. <laughs> Not a sure. credit to this Cowboy I'm team. I'm sure no one does. <laughs> they have hung in there. This game has swung the other way on them. And between Ed Jones and Jim Jeffcoat, they just took control of it once again here in the fourth quarter. Third and 16. Dorsett, and he wants to stay in bounds, and he does to the 18. And the Giants have to spend their last timeout. So the Giants take a timeout. Landry is going to try to cement it with a field goal. Strained medial collateral ligament is the report from the Giants locker room. Left knee. And we'll accept that, won't we, Dan? I have the... Uh... 
walked that dusty road before myself. I've had a sprained medial collateral, and that can be a 10-day to six-week injury. It all depends on the severity of it. I know one thing. Phil Sims is going to get used to wearing a Lennox Hill knee brace because he'll, the one made famous by Joe Namath or a derivative thereof, he'll be wearing a knee brace for a while. What a nightmare year for this man. Coach of the year, Bill Parcells, lost the first two games to the Chicago Bears and this Dallas Cowboy football team. Very weak replacement team. George Young, the general manager and vice president, accepting the blame for that. Did not want to upset the Giants building a replacement team while they were thinking about Chicago. Lost all three of those little dudes. Came back and had it together against St. Louis. Beat them 30 to 7 and was in fairly good control tonight. When the wheels came off, the crowd got in it. Some errors of commission that we wouldn't expect from veterans. And then some great play by Ed Jones and Jim Jeffco. Meanwhile, Ruzek will attempt to tie a Dallas Cowboy record for four field goals in a game if he can hit this one, and this would wrap it up. 35-yarder. Kalur holding. And this baby's over. Ruzek. The Cowboys, who go on the road for a couple of weeks, come back home to play Miami. And I'm thinking that game might be a sellout. You know, all of, all of Ruzek's field goals have come in this quarter. And he ties the mark held by Rafael Septien, Danny Villanueva, and Tony Frech, who did it twice. Four field goals in a game. Meanwhile, it's not mathematically over for the Jets. There are strong possibilities, but with your quarterback down, you don't know how long he's going to be out. you got a short week. You go in against New England. By the way, that ties an NFL record for most field goals in a quarter. Darrow Yepremian did it for Detroit against Minnesota in 66. And Kurt Knight of Washington did it against the Giants in 1970. I'll tell you what I have to do, guys, right now, or else I won't be able to go home. Today's my anniversary, so I have to uh... I have to say happy anniversary to my wife Debbie nine years tonight and uh, I got to be on the road that's the way it goes Debbie, Tough business. Debbie, Debbie's a little happier than <laughs> Belichick right now yes I can imagine you have great taste and you had yep. great taste nine years ago Bill, Bill Belichick, Belichick and it hardly believe it it hurts by Sean Landetta there with Belichick well we can tell you that Monday Night Football is produced by Ken Wolf and directed by Larry Cam our technical director Joey Shavo halftime producer Mike Pearl John McGinnis, our halftime associate producer. Rob Viner, our associate director. Bill Freeberger, our tech manager. Bruce Clark, Gary Lorberfeld, assistance to the producer. Research and information from Steve Hurt. Joe Castellano on computer graphics. And George Hill with the stats up here. And Malibu Kelly Hayes, Dickerson's neighbor. As usual, doing the spot. Lavaro takes the one hopper at the 20 yard line. Can't drag Ron Burton with him. Stop at the 36. Forty seconds. Giants do not have a timeout. For well, the Giants, I think it's all starting to seep in. They're just lifeless all across the field. Rutledge to Galbraith and he's knocked down at the 50 yard line and the clock keeps going so the Cowboys who were a one touchdown underdog at home and when's the last time you can remember that on their way to a victory Buddy Ryan may have created a monster got him stirred up well, he doesn't have to face him the next year either. Yeah. Don't remember, too. Cowboys go off to meet Detroit next Sunday. 
17 seconds. <laughs> Can this be? If, if, <laughs> not, uh, on, not on Tom Landry. You don't do that. Eugene, uh, <laughs> if you want to be a teammate of Eric Dickerson's, oh, I'd. <laughs> the Danny White that took it away from him. <laughs> oh, me. No, Steve oh. Ford. Oh, they're, they're thinking about it. Oh, oh, they're they, they're not going to do Landry. How about Tex Ram? There's, there's no Gatorade in there, though. There's something else in there. Oh, oh if they do this to Tom Landry, oh. this is. <laughs> well, Nightline will have to get a new subject for later tonight because there'll be a there'll be a Richter scale type eruption here in uh, in Dallas. <laughs> this is like a Saturday Night Live skit. Tom Landry gets Gator right. report on him. I have difficulty picturing ice cubes yeah. in the brim of that hat. They still have it ready. <laughs> second down, second and five. It's one way to keep an audience. I know oh. that. <laughs> Going deep and knocked down by Michael Downs with 11 seconds, and Mike Downs a little slow and rising. I, they're still holding the bucket over there. I can hardly believe this. <laughs> oh, there's towels in there. Oh, oh, oh you guys. They're really lacking a little pizzazz. That's one way to get a lot of camera time. Yep. That's the way it'll look in the NFC East. Skins down a second at four and three. And it's Lionel Manuel who makes the catch at the 30, and that'll do it. And for the Giants, a long ride home, and, and they did it. <laughs> for what it's worth. <laughs> so much for the smile. Yep. One for the ages, folks. He waves to Bill Parcells. They'll not meet on the field. <laughs> Dallas wins it, 33 to 24. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. <laughs> Another look. Dry towels. And a classic. <laughs> oh, they took his hat off. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the Cowboys. The Cowboys are back. Sort of. <laughs>